I'm Eileen Turtle. Welcome to Balmy Spirit. This is the weekly intuitive astrology reading for April 3rd to the 9th. I still can't believe we're finally in April. Crazy. Uh, so we have a few things that are worth mentioning astrologically about this week. Now, if you're new, welcome. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Really appreciate hitting the like button. Even if you just leave like a little comment of like a little heart or an emoji or whatever it is that you're feeling or vibing with, it really does help the video circulate if you are finding this video helpful for you, okay? Um, the way this works for those guys who are new, <clears throat> I go over the astrology of the week, give you my two cents on it, and then we go ahead and get into the collective. I like tried to do the timestamp ahead of time and I forgot to write collective. Then we do a collective message slash reading slash channeling, and then we get into the elements, okay? Um, and yes, this should be timestamped. I think it'll be very obvious actually. If it's not to you, then it is timestamped, okay? Uh, yeah, so that's it. So let's begin. Astrology starting at, so we'll do 110. Okay, as you can tell, I'm not in my normal abode. I am doing this slump on the road, um, but it is not going to stop me. <laughs> uh, so let's just get started with the week. So this week we do have the full moon uh, in Libra on April 6th, and on the 3rd, Mercury will be moving into Taurus. Now, there's a lot of asteroid activity. I'm not interested in diving deep into that with you. I really want to focus on the more prominent aspects that will be affecting us. Now, oh, plane. Sorry, ADD. Uh, <clears throat> Taurus. A lot of Taurus energy this week. A lot of Venusian energy, right? Because full moon is in Libra, but Venus is also in Taurus and Mercury is also in Taurus. It's a lot of Venus going on and all three of those are very significant. Mercury is creating two really strong aspects and Venus is creating a strong aspect to Neptune. So Taurus is a huge player. Cancer is also a huge player because Mercury is working with Mars. Mercury is also working with Saturn, and then Mars and Saturn are working together. But Mars is in Cancer, and then Pallas Athena, which is an asteroid, is in Cancer, and that has also been very active, and is also active still this week. So sign, like, as far as signs go, Taurus, Cancer, Pisces, did my brain just glitch out? No, no, that, I like, why did I think it was so much more than that? No, yeah, Taurus, Pisces, and Cancer. Sorry, it's been, it's been a long couple of days. Uh, so, so those are like the biggest signs to pay attention to this week, okay? Now, Mercury being in Taurus is sextile Saturn and Pisces. Mercury in Taurus is also sextile Mars and Cancer. When I started to get into this energy, for those of you, I feel like my tongue is acting weird. Ugh. For those of you guys who don't know how I work, I'm intuitive and so i practice intuitive astrology that's why i call these the intuitive weekly readings um the more i do this kind of work the more I'm, i've been starting to dive into almost like connecting with the celestial bodies like as far as like consciousness to consciousness is concerned and it's been kind of interesting and the energy i'm feeling for the week is to really practice an open mind while there's really beautiful energy there is some friction happening but I feel like it's really just to challenge us to be a little bit more open-minded as far as how we actually view cancer, how we view emotional, physical stability. And when we're trying to, to seek that out for ourselves, ground that for ourselves, but then relationships come into play. I actually was talking to my friend earlier and we were talking about how, you know, hermit mode is like, it's really nice to be in hermit mode, especially when you're like doing this kind of work and whatnot and when you're really open and sensitive. And I'm like, yeah, because it's like you have to practice all this like grounding and like ma like maintaining of your own little universe, right? Like your own personal reality. And then you get into like relationships, friendships or romance doesn't matter, right? And then it's like two universes colliding. It's a lot. It's kind of a lot to deal with. And so starting to have a lot more people in your reality when you're really sensitive, it can be really hard, right? And I think that actually does tie in well to the energy of this week. There's, I feel like Jupiter is actually at the center of this. So Jupiter's in Aries. That's another sign to be looking at this week. The full moon being in Libra also highlights the Aries Libra axis, right? Uh, <clears throat> and we are in Aries season. Happy birthday, Aries. But Jupiter, uh, during the full moon, Jupiter is going to be opposing the sun. And Jupiter is also square Pallas Athena, very close throughout the entire week. I think. That was really loud. It's the ice maker. Don't worry about it. Uh, Pallas Athena is in Cancer from 19 degrees to 21 degrees, and Jupiter's in Aries, 19 to 21 degrees. They're moving very closely with each other right now, this week. And that's what Jupiter's doing. Jupiter's like, look at everything that's going on with Taurus and Cancer and Pisces with Venus and Mercury and Mars and Saturn, and open your mind a little bit more as far as how to 
ground physical and emotional stability for yourself, but then bring that to the table with relationships and how to do that. Um, I feel like this is going to be a week where we're going to be practicing some new tools uh, on how to do that in relationships. Uh, maybe even having a new perspective on what relationships really require. Um, I was also talking to my friend earlier, and I think this also pertains to this week too, where I've, I've been feeling this collectively, where people have started to kind of trickle into each other's realities, like new people, like new tribe, and it feels different, right? That those connections are feeling different. Like it's almost like a very, very slow, slow build of who are you? Who, like, this is who I am, who are you? And getting to know each other and then putting down those blocks and putting down the next blocks and the next blocks and the next blocks, right? So it's nice. It's a really slow, solid, stable, sustainable building of foundations of all kinds of relationships. Spiritual relationships will be really high highlighted this week as well. Venus is sextile Neptune, uh, and that really speaks to that. But I want to come back to Mercury for a second. So Mercury is in Taurus. So our mindset is in the sign of Taurus. Our mindset is in the, the realm of self-esteem adorning the vessel adorning the home nesting how to uh, ground certain foundations that are meant to be long term uh, or new cycles even comforts uh sensuality is a part of that too but taurus really likes to take care taurus really likes to take care of others and take care of the self in a way where like providing a lot of comfort so our mindset is there and then since it's working with Saturn and Mars, both in a sextile, there will be opportunities to practice this. It's awesome when Saturn's working, so when Saturn and Mars are working well with Mercury, especially at the same time, because Saturn and Mars really motivate us to take action on things. Like Saturn applies restriction. I feel, my mouth is feeling so weird. You know, I ate something tonight I don't normally eat and I'm wondering if I'm allergic. Um, because my tongue is feeling a little weird to be, to be completely honest with you. Um, but I feel like I'm having trouble talking. Uh, Mercury retrograde is coming. It's not, well, it's actually, actually, the pre-shadow does start this week. The pre-shadow starts on April 7th. <laughs> so something to note, maybe there's something about that there. But when Saturn and Mars are working with Mercury, it's great because they, they both motivate us to take action. Saturn applies restriction. Saturn applies challenge pressure. I call it pressure. Saturn applies pressure and, and goes, will you rise to the challenge? Will you put in the focus and discipline and effort to do this, that, or the other? Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? There's something to be learned from this. And if you don't, sometimes Saturn gives a little smack on the ass if you don't. Uh, but Mars in and of itself is action, is fire energy. And they're both in water signs. Saturn is in Pisces and Mars is in Cancer. Now, Mars is technically debilitated in Cancer because Cancer is all about excuse me, emotions and feelings and emotional stability. And, you know, it's that like maternal moon energy when Mars really functions, functions well, oh, excuse me. Ugh. Mars functions better in like earthy energy actually, cause Mars likes to take action. Mars likes to do shit. Mars likes to destroy things and make things happen, right? That's what Mars likes to do. And so if it can actually exercise that in the physical, it's really, really happy but it's a very focused, almost like logical sort of a planet. That's what it really enjoys. So Cancer is like, it's a funky place for Mars to be in. It may, it puts us in the position to take action based off of our feelings, not necessarily logic. And in a shadowy way, Mars Cancer can be very passive aggressive, <laughs> very passive aggressive. But expressed in this way with Mercury and with Saturn, all three of them working together, it creates this very quick, quick-minded, clear-headed, organizational, like very focused on what the goals are and just making things happen and following through. With Taurus and Cancer and, and Pisces being in the midst of this, it's about devotion. It's about devotion. It's about nourishment. Nourishment was a thing that kept coming up. Nourishment of emotional stability and physical stability. So that could be the vessel that could be within the home. Like this could even be like a great week to like practice feng shui, like getting the energy of your home right, right? It could even be like that. Um, a lot of sensual energy to come up here too, a lot of romantic energy to come up. So don't be surprised if you experience that as well. The other thing that I kept hearing was receiving, 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 receiving. And that's where I was feeling that kind of like Pallas Athena square Jupiter, full moon and Libra opposing Jupiter sort of energy of like, 
go into these go into these situations to seek out and nourish emotional stability and physical stability within your life and within your relationships do that but be open-minded and how to do it in a new way how to do it in a new way some of us might feel challenged as far as like how do i want to say this like our views on how relationships actually work because they're changing uh what emotional stability physical stability actually is especially in the context of relationships information was a huge one too um like how do i want to say this because <laughs> it's all in the context of receiving how you how you interpret like certain um information basically how you interpret certain information about how situations are especially in relationships like are you assuming a lot are you taking things as they are? Are you looking at things in a black and white perspective? It's like, that's coming down to perception, I believe. That's what I just keep getting drawn to in, in terms of that. But receiving, receiving, receiving. How are you receiving emotional and physical stability, especially in the context of relationships versus giving? What is the balance there? Do you even have an understanding of what balance actually looks like? Right? So it's like, just be prepared for a challenge to open your mind and any beliefs you have around nourishment of emotional stability, physical stability, relationships in general, balance, um, but particularly like the, I just kept hearing that, receive, 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 receive. Chiron is also working with the sun this week too. Chiron's in Aries like 15 to 16 degrees and the sun I think actually moves between like 13 and 19 degrees, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 13 and 19 degrees in Aries. So it's gonna be really strong around the full moon. I think they're about, yeah, it's like they're one degree, like actually probably less than one degree away from each other on the full moon. That's also part of the challenge too. So Jupiter's doing its thing, and now Chiron's doing its thing, especially under the full moon with all this Libra energy against Aries energy again brings up this whole like idea of relationships and like where is the line as far as self versus others is there even a line or is it a circle <laughs> interconnectedness just saying anyway just you know trying to be funny anyway uh so with chiron's at play like that because it's going to be in opposition to the full moon it can be a little triggering there might be some triggers there um honesty wait what is this honesty if any of you have been struggling being honest with yourself about how you handle any of these things that i've been talking about grounding and seeking emotional physical stability for yourself and in the context of relationships and balancing all of that in a sustainable way in a healthy way and receiving receive i keep saying receiving there's going to be a new way of of getting into feminine energy and into that place of like being open and vulnerable for give and take of emotional nourishment within relationships. If you've been, ha if you haven't been honest with yourself about any struggles that you continue to have in the, these sorts of realms, it's going to be coming up. It's going to be coming up. There's also a week where there might be a lot of money spending. <laughs> money spending is how that meant to come out. I don't. I, it sounded weird to my ear. Um. Anyway money spending spending money I, that's what it was i was like did i say that grammatically correct <laughs> it's kind of like yoda speak going on here uh venus working with neptune speaks to that even just venus being in taurus kind of speaks to that where we might feel a little bit more encouraged to spend or a little bit more comfortable spending money i don't think it's a bad thing i think especially if you're doing that for the sake of investments because like i said mercury saturn mars great energy to be focused on your goals right and if any of those have to do with it, money money investment probably going to work out really nicely okay but that's kind of all i have to say about the astrology of the week now like i said taurus and cancer i would pay the closest attention to this week even though we do have a full moon libra pay very close attention to those signs in your personal charts and your personal planets um and then Pisces and Aries, I would say, are second. Ugh. Yeah, my tongue feels like bigger than it normally is. <laughs> it's such a weird feeling. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say about that. You might find there's still some balancing happening. 
this is just something coming in as a channeling, um, that there's still some, like, when I say balancing, I'm referring to karmic balancing. I've been talking a lot about that, and it's been coming up in the reads a lot for, like, the last couple of weeks, that for some of us, there's still a lot of, like, karmic balancing and clearing out and things like that. They're showing me the Ace of Swords. I feel like I'm, by, like, chewing on my own tongue right now. Um, they're showing me the Ace of Swords in relation to that, which to me feels like sweeping, cutting, clean slate. Like, that's actually what I'm getting from it. Sorry, that was a weird craft outside. Um, so yeah, just know that some of us are still going through that, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get into the collective message. Now, uh, as I was running out the door <laughs> to catch my flight, I was like, I forgot my ducks. <laughs> so I ran back inside and just grabbed what I could. So I only have three decks with me. So when we go through like collective and like the elements and stuff, I'm gonna have to like, you know, get my like, pr like re-prepare my decks. Oh my God, words. Yeah, you know what? I feel like I'm tapping into just like the early Mercury retrograde energy because the pre-shadow does start this week. <laughs> um, and for me, Taurus is 11th house, which is like community and, all of that stuff. Um, anyway, so just letting you guys know. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on the collective. Yeah, I'm hearing receive again. Receive, 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 receive. Some of you is just coming through. This is weird. Some of you, it's like where things have been trying to happen, it almost has this feeling of like drag. Like if you've been perceiving things getting really slow, almost like complete standstill, like sloth kind of movement in your life and your reality, and you're wondering like, aren't we in a new time? I thought things were changing. It feels a little bit like maybe there are a couple things that need to happen before like the change can happen for you or like you can actually receive almost, and I hate to say it, but it kind of like maybe you might actually be unintentionally blocking some stuff from coming in. <clears throat> I heard something um that's interesting we'll see if that comes up again okay you heard that too right anyway I'm going to start with Big Bertha for the collective message hmm. is it the table wait it might be the table Yeah, it's the table. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what is that noise? Any messages or insights for the collective for this week? Mm. Any messages or insights for the collective for this week? I'm trying so hard not to hear it now. Yeah, I keep getting like called back to like the feminine. And, you know, we were coming out of this period of time of, like, unlocking primordial magic. I talked about that in the podcast episode. I went turtle talk. Should be found somewhere in the midst of the channel page. Go ahead and check that out. That energy is ancient, but it is also speaks to that. It speaks to that primordial, like, feminine, sort of you could say feminine energy, like grandmother. Grandmother, great-grandmother sort of vibe. Uh, sorry. <laughs> trying sorry not to hear that noise. Um, that grandmother energy, that primordial energy, like primordial creative goddess, a uh, co-creative goddess energy that's coming up and out. There's a lot of people who've been doing root work. I know Scorpios, like that came up in the reading for Scorpios quite a bit. I feel like that's what this energy is that I'm talking about, like what it's pertaining to, like learning how to actually embody that. Like now that it's kind of unleashed, now that it's like come to the surface, how do we utilize that within ourselves? How do we embody that within ourselves? And especially in our relationships, might start to look different. Receiving might look different. Um, offering support might even look different. Co-creation might even look a little different or feel a little different and just kind of getting used to that. messages or insights for the collective for this week mm. 
Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm also like, got a little altitude sickness going on. So if it seems like I'm a little out of it, that's why. <laughs> I saw it. Where'd you go? Cracked open. Cracked open. Rock bottom surrendered to the alchemy of life. You know, a lot of us have been going through this rebirth energy. The collective has gone through that. Um, and we've also gone through so much clearing already, right? And that's kind of what I was saying. It's like, there's still some clearing happening. And the fact that Chiron is going to still be very active this week, in particular with the sun, you might have a little bit of a surprise of a whole other layer going on as far as like stuff to be cleared and stuff to be released and i do think this week it will be highlighted as far as like challenging us like have you really truly opened your mind to how you know you can be doing relationships differently receiving 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 they won't stop getting away from the receiving part of this and for those of you where things have slowed down around you almost like you know you're going through the tunnel right and the energy's like spinning it's spinning it's spinning and now it's starting to go like this right? uh, 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 uh. like it almost like things are kind of like like stalling in a way and you've been expecting to receive or expecting some sort of change I feel like that's because there's something else that's like trying to clear so that you can kind of continue through and that you can continue into uh receiving whatever it is that you're expecting to receive are you even really open to receiving it? Sorry, I need to stop for a second. Are you even really open to receiving it? That might be part of it. For example, um, let's say you've wanted a dream job for like ever. And you've tried and you've tried and you know you've wanted it, you've known you wanted it, or it's a promotion or whatever. And finally, it's here. It's like right at your doorstep. All you have to do is do like one little thing to make it happen. Maybe you just got to fill out the form. Why are you procrastinating filling out the form, <laughs> right? Are you actually ready for it? Do you actually want it? Or is there still something that's keeping you from receiving what it is that you does not just deserve, but what it is that you've been wanting? Or maybe it's something that's a wish fulfillment. This is the kind of era that we're in. We are in an age where we are allowed to live out our dreams. It's very, we can actually make a lot of things happen for ourselves, right? We're allowed to be happy. We're allowed to be happy. Is there anything that's coming up where you're not actually giving yourself full permission to live out that want, to live out that dream? And it feels like it's coming up this week. For those where you've been maybe um, halting the process, if you will. Any other messages or insights? Ooh, the stag. It's another huge synchronicity. Stag is basically like the elk energy. Trust. I thought that said thrust. <laughs> Trust and thrive. <laughs> Lifting the veil. Questioning everything. Anything unaligned must go. What is holding you up? What is it? What's keeping you from receiving? What is it? Some Anything unaligned, unaligned must go. So that you can continue in this, in this uh forward progression right so you can continue in that uh something else i wanted to know mercury is also working with the north node it will be conjunct the north node this week because it is in early degrees taurus and north node's at four degrees taurus um north node is also working with saturn as well along with mars but um that mercurial north node energy it's going to be great because it's going to help us to have a little bit more of a clearer mind of where we're going a little bit clearer sight of what the path actually looks like and clearly what has been getting in the way of that if there is anything left that's getting in the way of that i gotta be honest i'm still feeling like a little bit of fear a little bit of fear a little bit of apprehension a little bit of lack in trust like almost like all you got to do is sign on the dotted line and you've done everything and like fought so hard up until this point and now you're like i don't know <laughs> why would that be why would that be collective why would that be Let's see. 
older move beyond ancestral patterns. The courageous peony, multifaceted, unique nature, let yourself be seen. Something is holding you back here with this elder energy. Could it be ancestral patterns and woundings and all of that, ancestral curses? Yeah, absolutely, it could be that. Um, I feel like it just represents the past. I feel like that's honestly what it represents, your roots. I actually would really encourage anybody who's watching this reading to watch the previous, previous, excuse me, words, the most recent Scorpio video I did, because I feel like there were some collective messages in there relating to root work, and I'm feeling it here in this weekly reading. Um, again, this is, I think this is really more so for the part of the collective that may still be finding that they're hitting like drags or delays or walls um, from really fully receiving. It's just what it keeps coming up as. And then especially with the Courageous Peony, it's like that's about you being your unique self. You being fully cracked open and out and embracing your path and, embrace, and, and receiving. They said, don't say embrace. They said, and receiving. Receiving yourself. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, I just felt so much love with that. Receiving yourself. They're bringing up relationships with that too. How can you receive others if you don't receive yourself? Right? Fully. Fully. Wow. All right. Uh, some of you guys are going to start realizing what it is that you still have not received about yourself. And I do feel like that does relate to ancestry. It most definitely relates to ancestry and culture and old wounds. Whatever you are not receiving about yourself may have been historically what society has not accepted about you or people who are like you or come from where you come from. This is all like about roots. Yeah, I watch the Scorpio reading. I definitely watch the Scorpio reading. Scorpio was about like root work and origin stories as Batman, but this, this, like, Y'all aren't Batman. But anyway, definitely watch that reading if you're resonating with this part of the message. Spend time with your ancestors. That's coming through really, really strong. And this is not for everybody, but you know who you are. You know who you are because there's been stuff coming up for you recently relating to where you come from, your origin story your ancestry, your roots. An ancestry doesn't have to just be like where my ancestors are from. It can also be like traditions that may not tie directly to culture or tie directly to like, again, like blood of origin. It could even be like, um, how do I wanna say? Uh, like habits, right? Like certain habits. Um, addictions even things like that it doesn't have to be specifically like the culture of the origin of your blood um oh interesting hmm i'm getting a little more like the galactic side of that too we're all we're all we're all star stuff we're all star stuff all right we, we all we all are galactic um but depending on like where you're resonating within yourself and your soul, like you're gonna feel closer to certain galactic families, start closer to certain star families, really feed into that too a little bit, like explore that. Cause there could be some distortions there that could be holding you up as well. But this to me feels like how your roots or your past have really been keeping you from receiving. They're bringing me back to the primordial stuff I was talking about. The primordial magic, the primordial energy beings consciousness that has been unleashed recently, it's very old, it's very ancient, and it has been kept away. It has been hidden away within each of us individually, and of course, like I said, cosmically as well. What about that? That energy within yourself, that aspect of you, have you not accepted yet? This week will show you potentially that part of you that's been unlocked cosmically for everybody. What about it you haven't been able to accept yet? Let's keep going. Anything unaligned must go. Anything unaligned, it must go. It must flee. Any other 
messages and insights for the collective for this week. Interesting. Overall, activated earth, power places, ley lines, trust where you're led. Oh, I like that this is the, oh my God. Star ancestors, hold, hit it and hold. I swear I just saw the word hold. Hidden secrets, lost wisdom. Look a little deeper. Oh yeah, and then look, lost lands. Soul memories and gifts. You've done this before. This is all root. Some of you may be called to go home, physically go home to where, you know, to, in this physical incarnation, where home was for you, where you were born, where you were raised. This is also getting down to the deeper meaning of origins, of home, of, of where you came from. You know, maybe it's time to book an international flight and go literally like to the land of your ancestors, right? In order to do some clearing or some activation even. I'm getting a little, it's interesting. So I'm getting a little bit of like birthright energy, but I also can feel the hold up. I can also feel the anchor, like the chains, if you will. And I'm seeing the octopus energy. Uh, that roots and ancestry in the past are like we're you know doing us a disservice but also to unlock what is a birthright as well i'm also feeling that too so that's kind of interesting um but yeah activated earth this literally speaks of going to powerful places this literally speaks of going to places of activation or places of significance where you can personally be activated there are places that are specific to certain individuals because of excuse me because of who you are and because of whatever magic you carry that could be unlocking for you and maybe not do anything for the other 8 billion people on the planet, right? But then to have star, star ancestors and lost lands come up, like this is soul retrieval energy. This is totally soul retrieval energy. Um, they're bringing it back to the primordial energy again. Um, oh. I don't know if I said this in the last weekly, I said it at some point, or maybe I, I might've said it in the podcast episode, um, that there are certain bloodlines in particular that have access to this magic in a different kind of a way. Um, you know, especially when we're talking about certain bloodlines and lineages that really suffered under like mass distorted gatekeeping. The whole podcast was about how gate, gate, gatekeepers are losing their keys, right? unlocking this primordial magic um like we're talking about lineages that suffered under mass slavery mass genocide like lineages like that lineages <laughs> i want to tongue that works uh lineages uh that suffered through that the birthright is the wisdom that's coming through here reclaiming that retrieving that it's been unlocked but now it's time to claim oh it's time to claim it Oh, I got chills. Oh, that was so activating just saying that. Uh, gatekeepers have lost their keys. The gates have been open. That magic, that part of the consciousness, that part of the being individually and cosmically, collectively, it's unlocked and now it's time to retrieve it fully. Now, while this does speak of physically going somewhere, you don't have to physically, it doesn't apply to everybody of needing to physically go somewhere. Maybe it could even just be going to a spot where you just feel called to, like a spot in nature or even a spot in your home, okay? But this is to be open for activation. Activation and retrieval. A deeper soul retrieval is happening this week for a lot of us. Wow. And it will help to break some of these chains, some of these tentacles with the elder energy and show what is unaligned that needs to be released so you can fully receive okay wow i'm gonna leave those three cards i mean like these three cards are really powerful together like wow all right that is the collective message let's go ahead I was curious. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. I'm going to show you these next two cards that were underneath those three. And then we're going to go ahead and get to the elements. Broken arrow and star ancestors. I'll show you one more time. Activated earth with star ancestors. Big Bertha is a combination deck of the star seed oracle by Rebecca Campbell and the angels and ancestors deck. Both are linked below. Star ancestors with the lost lands 
And then literally Broken Arrow and Star Ancestors again from the other deck. Um, they're bringing up Lower World, middle, middle World, Upper World. This primordial energy that's been unlocked, we've been, a lot of people in the collective have been perceiving it or receiving it. They said receiving, sorry, not perceiving, receiving, uh, have been receiving it um, as like an oceanic, watery, uh, underneath the depths of the subconscious, like, you know, whales, dolphins, limery, like, like that kind of vibe, right? And now here we are with star answers. Now it's like we're going all the way up to upper world. Lower world is that. Lower world is like subconscious, the water, the depths of the ocean. And then middle world is like earthly plane. And then upper world is the heavens, the skies, the galactic beings. So there is a little bit of this like, it's not, it's funny because it's like the saying is as above, so below. So, okay, sorry, so many things I want to say right here. How do I even want to talk about this next thing? So something I've been sitting with. Um, I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying it's fact. It's just something I've been sitting with and getting downloads about. So for me, it is my truth and my reality. Again, always ha always practice your own truth, right? When we think about like shifting through portals or dimensions, right? It's like anybody who does that consistently, it's like there is this understanding and knowing of you transition and then you're there and then you transition and then you're there and you transition and then you're there and you know we look at the heavens the skies galactic and the lower world underworld ocean right um both of them we we, we look at as like veils of transition or veils of portal jumping or veils of moving through dimensions and dimensionality and what if like it literally is just that like one big giant circle of lower world to middle world to upper world to the next lower world middle world upper world to the next lower world middle world upper world and then like you understand what i'm saying oh that maybe dizzy i should have done that <laughs> uh, anyway um so now there is this co connecting to upper world, but I think it's really just to come to the realization that upper world is just another way of looking at the lower world in just a different dimension or dimensionality. Anyway, Broken Arrow is also about, it also says, indicates, embrace the energy of peace with follow the voice of your soul. Again, this is soul retrieval energy. This is a deeper soul retrieval. The primordial energy has been unlocked. Now it's time to receive it. Whew. All right, now let's get into elements. I am so thirsty. I am so dry. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Actually, I think I'm gonna call that this. Um, That's perfect. Oh my God, that's the perfect title. Sorry. <laughs> so, gotcha. All right, elements. Who's going to go first? <laughs> well, I just felt butterflies. It's like, like almost like a jolt and then butterflies in my stomach. It was like, whoa, what was that? Um, like the, the kind of like butterflies you get when you first like meet somebody and you're like, whoa, this person's going to be significant in my life. I don't know if anyone else experiences that. I experienced that. Like anybody who's been significant in my life, especially in a romantic way, like the second I meet them, I just know and I feel that like that wave of energy go through my body. That's what I just felt. So who is that for? Earth. Earth. Okay, Earth begins. It's for the Earth signs, the Earth babies. Ooh, Earth signs. I'm getting excited for your reading. I feel all kinds of like Earth magic, like literal Earth magic here. Um, you could be meeting somebody, the whole butterfly thing, doesn't have to be for everybody, but as I just started to drop into your energy more, I felt earth magic, like literally communing more with the earth, getting in touch with the magic of your element. And for some of you, it's gonna be more like that magic of your sign, of course, the magic of who you are as a person, your soul, your personal brand of magic as a light being, but let's keep it on the level for right now of like the magic of the earth element. 
The magic of the earth element is nourishment. So, oh god, that needs part of the title too, because nourishment's huge this week. Nourishment. Um, what would we be without plants, without animals, without the physicality of this plane, right? We would be non-physical, which I think a lot of us do miss and crave just being purely non-physical. Um, but physicality, the reason we decided to incarnate in physicality at all is to be able to experience energy in a different way. To be able to experience the collective conscious from outside of ourselves. That's why we, we, have, it, we have incarnated into physicality. So I'm gonna take this back a little notch. The way that I look at the Big Bang, this is not, I'm not saying this is all universal truth. This is just my perception of things. I look at the Big Bang as the choice, the moment of the decision for the collective conscious, which is God, in my opinion, to decide, I want to experience me. What is it like to experience me? And then, Big Bang. And we moved into this next level of existence of just existing in this place of separateness the in this in this existence of fractals right and aspects and like a lot of that is non-physical and then to take it a step further deciding to drop into physicality like dropping down dimensionally in order to do that right you don't really have physicality as you start to move up in dimensions um sorry i hope this isn't like too much jargon for you guys and in the physical reality, we are still experiencing God, right? It's God experiencing God is what it is, right? Um, but in a way where we actually can like have a different sensation. Like we actually have sensations in the physical realm. That's kind of magical. You don't really experience that in, in non-physical form. Like sensation, that is purely physical. That's so Taurus, it's like not even funny. That's so Taurus. Um, and that's what's coming up from my earth signs, like being aware of the magic of you, being aware of the magic of earth and physicality and what that really does bring and does deliver. I mean, it's like, it goes beyond that, but that's just like some things to kind of ponder on, some food for thought here. But yeah, earth signs, it seems like you guys are very in tune with your magic. You're very in tune with gratitude to be in, in this kind of experience, having this kind of experience, and maybe even taking on that new viewpoint even of relationships where maybe you've known and you've understood that relationships are just you experiencing you, God experiencing God, and sitting with that deeper, sitting with that in a deeper way. Uh, oh, sorry, starting with the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. <laughs> Just got caught up there. Okay, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Yeah, it's like, I, God, I like, I love this energy for you guys. It just has this vibe of like being excited and giddy to like study, study skills or cultivate your skills or your craft, whatever those things might be. That could be writing, that could be cooking, that could be, um, God, again, cooking, so Taurus. Um, that could be music, that could be your garden, like what? What, whatever that is for you, right? Any messages or insights from my earth signs for this week? And some of you guys, yeah, might be doing this with, with people. Maybe not just one person. <laughs> God experiencing God. That's what I'm going to start calling the salon card. I'm gonna start calling this one card that. Does it speak of partnership? Yes, but it also speaks of that connection with the whole self, right? Light and dark. I mean, we're so beyond that at this point, but God experiencing God, the mirroring, the the, the awareness of that. Any other messages or insights? Oh, and there it is on Cracked Open, Rabbit. Rabbit does speak of fertility and luck and abundance and all of that, but it also speaks of fear. And in this deck, it specifically is about like hypervigilance sort of fear with cracked open, right? Rock bottom, surrender to the alchemy of life. Cracked open happens when it, it can it can symbolize 
like an awakening, it can symbolize like the start of awareness or the start of a new level of awareness, but through pain, actually. Because like, think about it, right? Anytime we're clearing something out, we got to basically get the gunk out, which doesn't, it's not a pleasant experience all the time. Think of it like, if you took in something toxic, like someone's toxic words or someone's toxic emotions, and you gave it a physical form, it probably has like sharp spikes on it and crap like that, and you swallowed that shit. And it's been sitting in your heart with spikes. To purge that, it's gotta come out the way it came in, in a way, right? It's not always a good feeling. So it's like this card can sometimes be associated with pain or letting pain go by really truly experiencing it and letting it go. Well, it's actually hurting my heart as I'm talking about it. Um, but it also shows us what we've been holding on to. So we can be fully cracked open in a vulnerable way. And then with Swan and Rabbit, that's kind of what I'm getting. This does feel like a catalyst to me. This feels like a catalytic reaction. It doesn't have, and when we say catalyst, I think there's also such an association with that of like a relationship catalyst. It's, that's not always what a catalyst is, right? A catalyst could be like, an, like a solo event. It could be like losing your job, right? losing your home, losing your pet, like those are catalytic events um, or getting a job even kind of what I was saying, right? It's like getting ready to receive, getting ready to receive and then you're not signing on the dotted line. Why? <laughs> Why? So this is speaking to the fact that there are certain events or towers or meetings or what have you um, to get you to this next level of awareness, to get you to do this primordial soul retrieval, uh, to fully nourish yourself, nourish emotional and physical stability in a new way, in an elevated way, right? So you can also just receive the life that is that you've been trying to receive. And it's gonna show you what needs to go as well. But you're gonna see your fear. You're gonna see your fear. You're gonna see fear you didn't know was there through some sort of catalytic event where the elk wanted to come out. We'll see, we'll see if he comes out. I just saw him peek in a little bit. I saw the antlers. Ah! <laughs> but deer came out, the feminine principle. So in this deck, for those of you guys who are new, there's deer and elk. Elk is the masculine principle in this deck and deer is the feminine principle in this deck. And here we have cobra with deer. It's funny because this actually is what's getting pulled for stag and lifting the veil so here we have the stag and his deer i'm loving it i just heard soul retrieval again cobra can indicate teaching learning but it also can be you can see he's like watching right so it can be like a waiting energy an observant pause energy what isn't right what is not right about certain situations certain environments it's like i feel like an alarm bell is going off that's what it feels like to me so there's this like events that are cracking us open events that are showing us fear all these things to really assist us in this soul retrieval of this primordial aspect of ourselves so we can receive all these things right so that's starting to happen and as that's happening you're seeing the fear but also alarm bells are going off what's not right here what's not right what's not right what's not right what's not right what needs to go what needs to go how do i need to change what needs to change here it almost feels a little bit panicky actually which is interesting the fact that deer is here like i said deer is the feminine principle and like i was saying it's like that can't syrian energy of like emotional stability and nourishment and comfort um this is a week of harmonizing physical and emotional comfort I should pay it put it that way hold on it's too much I need to put in the title. <laughs> Harmonizing, emotional, physical, comfort. Anyway. Um, and here we have the physical and emotional comfort via the deer and the stag trying to come in here showing itself. But this is about the alarm bells of what's getting in the way of doing that. Any other messages or insights? Oh, interesting. So around Elder and the Courageous Peony, again, this like octopus-like energy, the chains that are like keeping us from fully being cracked open, keeping us from like fully doing the soul retrieval. Firefly and Whale. 
Firefly is a spark. It's like, it's it can even be a download, especially coupled with Whale, kind of feels like a download to me. Whale is the subconscious. Whale is that deep primordial energy that we were in space, the lower world. Whale is kind of indicative of the wor lower world. And in some ways, even the upper world as well. So again, this whole thing that I've been sitting with for a while of like, aren't they technically the same? Mm, mm, so I'm nothing about. Anyway, um, but Firefly. But yeah, I, I feel like this is a download. This this totally feels like a download to me. Because normally it speaks of like a spark of inspiration, like a music energy that comes in really fast and leaves really fast. It feels like a download to me with Whale being there. Like I just feel subconscious, consciousness, right? Like that's what I feel with the Whale. So downloads are coming in here to show you roots, ancestral anything, or anything relating to the past um that that really needs to be let go of the cobra keeps jumping out at me so strongly like alarm bell alarm bell alarm bell alarm bell alarm bell alarm bell for anybody who is moving into a catalytic experience that is between you and another person they're gonna set off your alarm bells and i don't even think it's gonna be necessarily directed at them like oh you're a red flag i don't feel that i think it's just they're gonna trigger your alarm bells about your life or even potentially about other people in your life. So just be prepared for that, whoever's in that boat. Let's see what else wants to come out here. Watch the elk come out. Watch the elk come out. I almost feel mouse energy, actually. Let's see. Any other messages or insights for my earth signs? Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, Moth. <laughs> ah, beautiful and butterfly. Moth and butterfly coming out together. Moth is interesting to come out here because moth is magnetic. It's like charismatic moth to a flame, right? Butterfly is renewed, coming into a new cycle. I'm hearing new awareness is actually with the butterfly. New awareness. Um, I'm feeling strong attraction here, Cappies. And even the way this is laying on the, on the table, I wish I could show you. So I'll do my best. So we have these two cards, right? Did I say Cappy? Or sign? Maybe this is for Cappies. And then we had deer and cobra laying like that. And then we had moth and butterfly laying like that. So for those where there's a catalytic experience between you and another person, between a stag and a deer energy, the stag has cobra and moth while the deer has letting things go and butterfly. Okay? Um, and if that is the case, there's a lot of attraction here. And it goes both ways. Um, it goes both ways. And there is like an anticipation, a waiting, an awareness. Thank you. An awareness on behalf of the stag energy towards the deer of recognizing that the deer is clearing. That the deer is clearing. Which is why the stag is just waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. But that's for those who are having this like catalytic experience with another person. Um, yeah. But earth signs... Whatever the catalytic experience is, whatever shape or form it comes in, it is cracking you open. It is assisting with this soul retrieval, and it's also something that you can't avoid. I don't think it's something you'd even want to avoid in the first place, and you're going to start to get downloads. You're definitely going to start to get downloads. Some of you guys are going to go through some sort of birthright or initiation as far as your own gifts are concerned for those where that applies. Um, yeah. Overall... We have horse. Oh, and look. <laughs> the octopus. Ew. Fire ant. Uh-oh. Golden egg. And I'm just going to show you guys. Snake. So that octopus and fire ant is exactly what I was talking about before. It's like, what is getting in the way? What is getting in the way? And it's interesting that it's around golden heart because that is the heart chakra. Sorry, I thought I saw a word light outside. Because that is the heart chakra card. That's the heart, heart space card. And here we have Horus on the other side. Horus in this deck is the master of the earth element, which is you guys. Um, Horus is really great at balancing and multitasking. So we're also been speaking to that too. This is a very earthy, watery sign. I look at this a little bit like cancer a lot of the times because it's like, I don't want to say it. There's something about it that feels intuitive, but something about it that also feels like 
beautiful and graceful and very motherly but i know it's also very like earthly as far as like the queen of pentacles energy it's like queen of pentacles meets cancer it's like kind of how i look at it it's the best way to describe that and that is balancing taurus and cancer that is balancing emotional and physical stability the horse will like multitask and get all kinds of shit done but then also take care of herself and take care of the family or whatever right hey Fire ant and octopus. Fire ant is anger, it's tension, it's things that are uncomfortable. Octopus is, like I said, it's like chains, it's restriction. It's kind of like the devil card in tarot all around the heart space. You're going to see what this is. Even if it's gonna catch you by surprise, you're gonna see what it is and where it comes from. Uh, again, calling a spade a spade. Some of you have a fear of intimacy. Oh my God, I'm so, so dry, sorry. Mm. Some of you guys have a fear of intimacy. You're gonna realize that. Some of you guys have been in denial about that. Sorry, it just that's just what I'm seeing. But let's get some tarot cards out here. Okay. Go to where you're guided. Sorry, I got pulled back to this again. go to where you're pulled if your soul says i need to be in idaho go to idaho <laughs> if your soul goes i need to go to mexico go to mexico if your soul says uh you you need to go to that very very specific bike shop over on like fifth and main and you need to get there by 227 go <laughs> Go, 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 go. Do not ignore that. Um, it's guiding you to circumstances or physical locations or even people that will assist you in this primordial soul retrieval, okay? Um, that will assist you in seeing this fear, that will assist you in seeing the octopus um, and assist you in understanding like new elevated ways of going about emotional physical stability and relationships okay listen to it listen to it listen to your soul any other messages or insights from your earth signs capricorn taurus virgo capricorn taurus virgo Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Okay. <laughs> so High Priestess just came out and guess what it landed on? <laughs> the downloads, High Priestess. So not, not shocking. Not shocking that that happened. So yeah, just I think further confirmation that downloads are coming in. Um, spikes in spiritual gifts or intuition. I would really pay attention to your dreams. Really pay attention to your dreams and spend time communing with your ancestors for those where you know you need to, okay? Any other messages or insights? For my earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Ooh. So what landed on moth and butterfly? Four of wands in reverse. Remember the alarm bells? What's not working, what's not working, what's not working, what's not working? Because this is also surrounding cobra and the deer, which is where I was feeling the alarm bells. What is not stable? This is what's getting rectified. You're gonna see, you're gonna see. This is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see the four of wands in reverse. You're not gonna have any illusions uh, about what the four of wands in a verse is in your life. How to go about stability in a new way, emotional and physical. High Priestess, now we have the five of pentacles in reverse, unleashing. Unleashing from the octopus energy, unleashing from those chains. It's also this feeling too of not being lost anymore. That's something that just came up too. Um, this is part of that soul retrieval energy that I was talking about. I don't know if I mentioned that, but it is a part of the soul retrieval energy that I was talking about, like reclaiming that peace, reclaiming that peace, feeling also more at home within the spirit, more at home within the self. 
Yeah, I just keep getting this like not being lost anymore. Not being lost anymore. Hold on, I gotta stop. For some of you guys, you may have been experiencing very strange and very in your face divine intervention happening recently in your life, and it's been to get you away from unstable situations. Um, and if you haven't been fighting, like if you haven't been listening to that, if you've been fighting it, you might have a tower coming up here. It's not a threat. I'm just, you know, it is what it is. Because um, if that's the case, Spirit's been trying to guide you away from those situations. Yeah, four of wands in reverse, now I have eight of cups in reverse. What you've been having a hard time detaching from, what you've been having a hard time moving away from, or even seeing clearly. For some of you guys, there's also the fear of, of things falling apart the fear of instability is also tied to this and it can even like be have fueled codependency or emotional attachments things like that um also the fear that comes up when you do attempt to receive because what you're really afraid of is like the expectation of the four of wands in reverse we also have seven of cups in reverse that came out and it landed on the high priestess again big soul retrieval energy big clarity coming in here through these downloads and through dreams and intuition. Any other messages or insights from my earth signs? So you guys really need to let somebody go. Even if you've let them go physically or in your mind, you haven't let them go in your heart. You haven't let them go in your heart expectation of like how something should have gone you gotta let that go you guys know who you are you don't need me to tell you who you are in that case any messages or insights from my earth signs wow so on the swan with the rabbit nine of pentacles in reverse and the eight of pentacles in reverse there's an ace of pentacles there stability stability and wanting new opportunities again that's what i was getting to with the swan and the rabbit because it's uncracked open like there's been this expectation of new opportunities or expectation of change and maybe it's been slow coming and i feel a little bit of that halting energy with the nine of pentacles universe and the eight of pentacles universe like this is like shit's not working shit's not working right or being afraid afraid of signing on the dotted line and with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse, that's lacking confidence, that's insecurity, that's lacking self-worth. It's like all of those kind of energies, right? But like this has been fueling the Eight of Pentacles in reverse of like not doing what it is you know needs to be done to receive that Ace of Pentacles. But the real reason you haven't been doing it or the real reason you might have been procrastinating is some sort of deeply embedded fear. And again, could just be fear of loss expectation of loss uh fear of intimacy fear of commitment fear of responsibility fear that you can't handle it or fear that you're not good enough and people will see that you're not good enough mm. any other messages wait when did we start your reading or signs i feel like i've been on you guys for a bit oh you guys are getting a long reading any other messages or insights from my earth signs capricorn taurus virgo Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Wow. On the nine and the eight of pentacles, we have the sun in reverse. Delayed new beginning. It's everything I was already talking about. And then on the four of wands in reverse with the eight of cups in reverse, we got the four of cups and the emperor in reverse. This is avoidance. It's avoidance and it's stemming from emperor in reverse. Insecurity trying to control because we don't really feel super confident we don't really feel super confident because there's still some deep underlying fear some deep underlying hold and again for some of you this goes way back like do some root work again watch a scorpio reading um if you haven't watched it yet keep in mind too the eclipses that are coming up april 20th we have the uh, we have new moon aries and then the next moon which is a full moon it's going to be in scorpio and that's going to be a partial eclipse i believe um, believe it's partial but yeah full moon eclipse in Scorpio do you remember the last full moon Scorpio eclipse think back to May of 2022 a year excuse me a year ago what was going on in May of 2022 
it was very karmic I think for everybody um yeah I feel like this May this particular like Scorpio full moon eclipse uh I feel like is meant to have a reflection back to that back to a year ago because that was also the first eclipses we had after the nodes switched over to Taurus and Scorpio in Tropic. And then we had the new moon eclipse in October, which was coinciding with the Mars retrograde, also pivotal for a lot of people. There were like people that came in randomly or events that happened that like triggered shit that went on until March, right? For some of us, like things kind of flipped over in January when Mercury went retrograde. So just think about it, right? What have you been learning, not just since October, but what triggered for you in May, a year ago? Mm -hmm. I just heard root system. It relates, it relates to the soul retrieval. It relates to the sphere. Okay, earth signs. Earth signs, I feel like I'm doing you guys, but I feel like I'm doing a collective read, like a, like a mass collective read right now. Anyway, yeah, four of cups and emperor in reverse. Like this to me feels like avoidance. This to me also feels like isolation a little bit out of fear. Do you isolate yourselves or signs? Do you have a history of isolating yourself? There, it definitely feels like 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 a not acknowledging the Ace of Pentacle that really is here. It's not here in the cards, but it's like that is the new beginning, right? That's been here. All you need to do is sign on the dotted line. And I think again, for most of you, where it's like you haven't been signing on the dotted line, why haven't you been signing on the dotted line? Something in you wants to look away from that. Overall, we do have the Five of Wands in reverse. Page of Wands in reverse. Three of Swords. Huh. Ten of Swords in reverse. And the Moon in reverse. And what is the Moon revealing? What clarity is coming through here? How shit didn't work out. Seven of Pence, Five of Cups, Three of Pence in reverse with the Queen of Cups underneath that. I'm going to get into all of this in a second. Um... This feels like the catalytic event. This feels like the catalytic event. Page of Wands in reverse is literally the bad news card. It's like, it's receiving bad news or someone acting out or acting like sarcastic and childish. But Three of Swords is pain and it brings up the 10, even more pain, which is also means there's a seven there, which is also deceptive shit or shit that's been hidden away from us. But what's interesting to me is that it's, it's all coming under a Five of Wands in reverse. Five of Wands in reverse is like, it speaks of competition and conflict, but like coming out of that, like coming out of the pettiness, coming out of the pettiness, there could be like some sort of like putting, putting the arms down, like not bearing the hatchet because I don't necessarily feel apologies, but like maybe someone around you is letting something go. It's almost like a tense situation or a tense way of being is dissipating. And for some reason, that's triggering you. Maybe you thought it would never happen. Maybe you thought there would always be struggle and competition, or maybe you always thought like someone or like specific people would always like be on edge with you or always like fighting with you, or you know, you always had to be in that place with them. And the fact that it's like not, it's like kind of breaking your programming a little bit and it's really triggering you. It's really triggering. And it's bringing up some deeply seated fear like it's like you're having a very hard time trusting that and underneath that with the moon in reverse it's clarity about this fear and the clarity yeah i feel like it's a trust issue definitely like it's a major trust issue three of pentacles in reverse the five of cups and the seven of pentacles in reverse this is feeling loss and grief over something not working out not being able to work with people, feeling like you wasted time or like mistakes even, may even be worried that people might look at you as a waste of time. Mm. Making mistakes, making the wrong choices. It's fear of loss. It's all these things that I've been talking about. Underneath that, Queen of Cups. Oh, there's the tower. Tower, holy crap, with the Ten of, with the ten of Cups. I, again, I feel all kinds of different fears here, but I feel like fear of intimacy, fear of being vulnerable, fear of trusting, that seems to be like the core of it. Um, 
and there's like other themes surrounding it like codependency attachment for sure but like also this like um almost a little bit like imposter syndrome too like they're gonna see through me they're gonna see through me they're gonna see through me um like they're gonna see i'm not good enough or i'm not good enough or like i'm like i'm not the kind of person that would have this or that or the other like stuff like that again stuff that's just illusions but yeah queen of cups and the tower and the ten of cups reflecting on that yeah <laughs> so as opportunities come in to show you how to really ground and anchor and have and maintain physical and emotional security or signs um just know that it's going to bring up some deep shit and that's okay okay all right so moving on yeah again that felt like such a collective read <laughs> like quite a collective read there all right <clears throat> intermission <laughs> i'm just letting you guys know right now if you need to go get some water you need to pause you need to like, go for a potty break i need to reset this deck my right away deck and i'm also super dry from just being in arizona but um i'm gonna be back in like at it's the clock's moving and i'm trying to calculate at like 113 be back at 113 oh. Uh. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna grab myself another water because that's almost out. Since I got like a one more minute. Whew. It's a crazy weekly. This will help. This will definitely help me a little bit. I cannot get moist enough. <laughs> my throat is like, my throat is like, like the desert right now. Might as well be tumbleweeds in my throat right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, we are back. We are back from intermission. I kind of like doing intermission actually. All right, who's going next? Water? Ooh, water signs. Hey, water signs. Okay. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Oh my god, I'm already getting chills. Ooh. Might be need an activation warning on this one. Water signs, you might require activation warning. Okay. Um, oh my god, why did I shuffle like that? <laughs> I got so distracted by your energy, I shuffled this a little differently. Oh well. I'm going to read them upright anyway, because I always do. Uh, starting with the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck for my water signs, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Any messages or insights from my water signs for this week? Cancer, Pi they're highlighting April 7th, which is actually the day after the full moon in Libra. Um, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Scorps, I think you're going to be having a very different experience compared to Cancer and Pisces. 
it's just the vibe I get. It's like Pisces and Cancer, you know, Saturn's in your sign, Mars in your sign, and both working with Mercury and Taurus, but Mercury's opposing Scorpio. So while Mercury's working really well with you guys right now. So just keep that in mind, Scorpios. Your experience is going to be a little different than your, your sister water signs there, okay? Any messages or insights from my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Mm. Mm. The dragon. Solar plexus energy coming in. That's a strong card to get right away. Um, I was feeling a pull down the front of my body. It was like very strange. And I was like, are you guys meditating, grounding? So the fact that we got a chakra card coming out here is your first card not surprising because that's what I was feeling it's like almost like you guys are grounding and anchoring maybe clearing your your main line that's what I call it clearing a central line excuse me but with the solar plexus being highlighted here with cracked open um it actually yeah it feels like a balancing to me it does it does to me it feels like a balancing is happening and it's happening at your center at your solar When dragon comes out, dragon speaks of seeing through the veil of the ego, um, being able being able to see, um, being able to take that observant stance here. But it also speaks of confidence and self worth because it is the the soul uh, the soul the soul <laughs> solar is what I meant to say the solar chakra. Some of you guys have been integrating your dragon, your inner dragon, integrating some shadow energies there. Some of you guys are going to realize what else needs to be come into the fold is like that's what I should say um no I want to say it a different way being aware and receiving and accepting your inner dragon um with certain aspects of your dragon that you ha just haven't yet that you haven't yet any messages earthworm zero point coming out here this speaks of new cycles new environments new beginnings feeling very green at something feeling very foreign at something and maybe being very uncomfortable with it but that is okay but this speaks of new new cycles new environments new circumstances new opportunities happening for you this week water signs i feel like it's actually triggering your solar i do i feel like it's triggering your solar plexus uh, you might start to have stomach issues, so be mindful of that. Your solar may be talking to you more than you're used to. Um, so again, pay attention to that. But yeah, I feel a little bit of an activation there happening with whatever this new circumstance is that you're moving into. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Yeah, now I'm all, I'm, I'm just seeing gold. Gold, 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 gold. Um, a lot of gold in your field. Wear gold if you, if, you, if you can. There is another sign that got this. I don't think it was a water sign, though. I think it actually was an earth sign that got this in their weekly, in their, not their weekly, excuse me, in their sign reading. But gold, gold just came up all of a sudden. Oh, oh, lamb and the swan. Okie dokie, lamb is also a new energy. Lamb is kind of like a baby. It's like being wet behind the ears. So it goes really well with um, the earthworm because they both speak of like new, new, new perspectives, new us new circumstances, things that like are foreign to us. And then we have swan, God looking at God. I mentioned this in the um, the the earth, the earth signs portion. I can't speak for some reason. The earth signs portion. For some of you guys, this could be about a new relationship because swan speaks of partnership. Um, God, this just feels so new. How do I, how do I describe this? Um, looking at relationships differently because you're looking at yourself differently you're looking at the world differently you're looking at life differently um through some recent work that you've done on yourself and yeah for some of you guys this flat out could be a relationship flat out could be a relationship doesn't have to be romantic just because i say relationship it could even just be soul tribe energy but it's new it's new, and I feel like it's directly tied to your solar or it's activating your solar. Any other messages or insights from my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio for this week, for this upcoming week. Cancer, Pisces. I'm hearing growth. I'm hearing the word growth, growth, growth. You've grown a lot, water signs. Be proud of yourselves. Love yourself for how much you've grown. 
How much you've grown and shed is actually what I just heard. Oh, of course. Okay, water signs. You've got a lot of cards with the earth signs. Well, a lot. You have two out of the five cards you have. Also came up in the earth sign reading. So if you have any earth sign placements, watch it. Taurus was significant this week. Watch it. Um, but anyway, horses coming out here. This is the mastery of earth. It's kind of like the queen of pentacles meets cancer. Um, the master at harmonizing physical and emotional stability is horse, which is a huge theme for this week. Coming into with elder and the courageous peony. I'm hearing shedding again, shedding, shedding, shedding. So water signs, you have shed something recently. And I feel like it was a distortion of the horse is actually how it's coming through. Almost like a shadow of the horse. Like Shadow Force to me would be like almost like a Knight of Wands energy, like somebody who is um, really focused on their freedom, really focused on their independence. But I'm also getting a, like a distorted strength there um, of like being the one who can handle and manage everything, kind of being in control, being in control for the sake of your own independence, making sure you control situations so that you feel free enough and stable enough, regardless of circumstances, even if it's not actually making you happy could even be a fear of being controlled. That's just what came up. Any other messages or insights from my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Ooh, look what just came on the fox. Around the earthworm, we have the fox energy. It's very Gemini and fox is like an observer, quick minded energy. They can be very charismatic, quick on their feet. New, new, this is a new perception, new view new belief, a new I, a new I. Water signs, I feel like, like I said, like you're definitely seeing yourself, life, the world, people, relationships, you're seeing all of that differently. And you've had some sort of like solar activation go on in, in the midst of this too. And also some shedding of some distorted horse energy in the way that I've already talked about. Now with Fox coming out here, Fox also speaks to a lot of that. But, you know, as within, so without, including within relationships, right? The swan also speaks to that too, the mirroring that goes on in relationships. With you taking on this new I, I really want to say I, someone else has taken on a new I. And so other people are viewing you differently. And it could be one particular person is viewing you differently. Um, I do get that vibe of like, they've misjudged you. They've misjudged yeah, And maybe you've misjudged others and you're learning that too. And you're shedding that too. Any other messages or insights? My water signs, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Oh, there it is. Shed, shed, shed with the frog. Uh, frog is emotional shedding, emotional cleansing. And it landed right on top of the fox. Yeah, so water signs, it seems like to me, you've recently shed shadow or you will be shedding shadow, <laughs> sorry to say, uh, this week. And I feel like the shadow is like the shadow of the fox and the shadow of the horse. If this is happening between you and another person, one of you could be shedding the horse, one of you could be shedding the fox, you both could be shedding both. Take it as it resonates. But shadow of the horse is what I described already, right? It's like prioritizing freedom and independence at the cost maybe of others, maybe even at the cost of your actual happiness because you're afraid of being controlled. You're afraid of those power dynamics and maybe even being controlling as a result of that too. Being strong and in the power seat. Um, fox energy, shadowy fox energy is a trickster, is a deceptive person. It just is what it is. <coughs> Could also be very judgmental, very critical, very good with their words and quite a manipulator. And it's particularly with words, but shedding a lot of that, okay? Some of you guys have enabled the shadow of the horse within you because of experiences with a shadowy fox energy and you've also just shedding that so you can shed your shadowy horse. How many times can I say the word shadow? Moving on. Any other messages or insights from my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. And here you are born anew, like a brand new babe as the lamb. I really love that lamb energy for you actually because there's a sweetness that I'm picking up water signs that you're moving into. Now keep in mind, if there is another person you're going through with this, like a fox against a horse, so to speak, so to speak, or again, you both could hold characteristics of both, but um, the lamb energy that's being born from this is so sweet. <laughs> it is, it's like, it's sweet, it's vulnerable, it's very honest, it's very unencumbered, but I, I just keep getting like, like a, a gentle sweetness. Um, yeah, 
there's got to be another word for this because it's endearing. It's very endearing. Um, there's another word. It escapes me. But anyway, moving on. Someone wants to help you. That's also something that's coming through water signs. They're showing me the Six of Pentacles. Somebody wants to help you. Are you going to let them? Are you going to receive water signs? Are you going to receive? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Someone wants to help you. It may even be this Fox energy uh, from past, recent past, or someone that reminds you of that energy, that person. Someone wants to help you. Up to you if you allow, allow that to happen, because they're seeing your lamb energy. They're seeing your lamb energy. Ooh. And it's like so sweet and so pure and so gentle that it's almost like everybody wants to help the lamb. Who doesn't love a little baby lamb, right? Any other messages or insights from my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Oh, am I taking this? This is a lot. Oh, God, they want me to take this. Ooh. Okay. Oh, this is, this is funky. Seeing through the bullshit is really what this is about. We have starfish with hyena. So let's start here. Starfish and hyena. This is like somebody using a facade to attract. It could be purely physical, like somebody, I don't know, um, you know, catfishing. It could even be that. Or it could be somebody like saying all the right things, doing all the right things, right? To attract or to be attractive or to fit in. But with the hyena, there's illusion there. It's not real. It's not real. And then we have unicorn and the wolf. Unicorn wolf combination sees right through that bullshit because unicorn's the third eye. It's the third eye energy. It's literally seeing all things all like everywhere all at once. <laughs> That's something I've been saying recently since seeing the movie, and I just I just can't help it because it's so fitting for how a lot of this works. But anyway, um, Unicorn is also believing in the impossible, being connected to the non-physical, etherical. That is Unicorn energy. Wolf, Wolf is wisdom. Wolf is like a student-teacher energy. I do I've been looking at the Wolf more as Alpha recently, which has been kind of interesting. Um, but Wolf also speaks to packs, right? Um, people who want, I'm getting a protective energy, people who want to protect other people, protect the pact, protect kids, protect the family, um, stand up for social issues. Like it's, this is what I'm feeling with the wolf right now in this context. Like this is an energy of somebody who does like to look out for people, who actively looks out for people, tries to support other people because it's just part of who they are. It's part of their blueprint. And with unicorn, this is also, this could even be like, like a shaman or like somebody who has like certain gifts or abilities purposely to help other people. This could be a seer, right? And look at what they're seeing. The starfish and the hyena. So this is the energy of, again, somebody who's seeing through the bullshit of others, seeing through their mask, and it's coming in behind horse, which is also attached to the elder and courageous peony card. Some of you guys are seeing how in your past and maybe even presently, specifically with people who've been in your life, like your whole life, like family, or people who like you've spent like half your life with like a marriage or some sort, like, you know, energies like that, um, or habits or patterns of just playing along, playing a role, putting on a mask, um, trying to have a certain image like even just a habit or pattern like that, that like you're seeing how much illusion and distortion it perpetuates. Whether this is through your own family, through your own life experience and relationships, or you're seeing this more on like a, like a larger scale, but really recognizing how that's played a role in your life and seeing how toxic it really is. Seeing how toxic it really is. Now, some of you might've called someone out on this behavior some of you will be doing that this week, and some of you guys are gonna get called out, okay? Now with the hyena, sometimes it can feel very maniacal. It's not always maniacal. Some people are just programmed to do that. Some people are just programmed to like present a certain image, even if it's not who they are, right? Now I'm gonna be honest with you, water signs. If, you, if there's been like a horse fox dynamic whether it's friends or family or relationship, or maybe this is something that happens in all of your relationships, 
because that could totally be a thing too, like a relationship pattern. Um, there could be a lot of blaming going on between both parties there of like seeing how, how one person's like not being real, but then they see how you're not being real. The facade, right? Like, oh gosh. Yeah, water signs this is coming up as like, it's just real. It's just realistic that it's just authentic that not everybody is pretty. Like not everything about a person is attractive. People got the rough edges. It's part of being human. It's part of being human, right? And so you and water signs, like maybe you're the person who can see people's edges, right? Who can see people's edges and they can, or, you know, maybe this person sees yours, your edges, but accepting that everybody has edges, including you, accepting maybe this person has edges, maybe they accept this about you. You understand what I'm saying? There's like a lot of judgment that's kind of been thrown around here. Um, yeah, but that's what I'm getting with that. It's okay to have edges, water sign. And it's okay that other people do. It's also okay to recognize that, especially for those of you guys water signs who are very intuitive and who are like, who have some serious gifts and like you're helping people, that it, that comes with the burden of having gifts. Ignorance really truly is bliss to some extent. If you know everything about a person, you're gonna know some ugly shit it is what it is nobody is pristine nobody is um thus carrying the burden of that and then ex like having compassion for people anyway holding space for people anyway it doesn't mean you let people take advantage of you right but it's recognizing what being human is right rough edges and all and maybe you pre and like I said, maybe you judge people too harshly for that. Maybe you're finding your footing with that. Maybe someone's finding their footing with you or both, but that's what I'm seeing here. Let's see what else wants to come out. Water signs. Any other messages or insights my water signs? Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. On the bottom. Let it go. Shed. Shed it. Shed it. Shed it. Some of you guys might have also been harboring some anger too or some hurt emotions about seeing people's edges and feeling like people lie to you. Or maybe a fox deceived you. Um, let it go. Shed it. Shed it. Cleanse it. You'll feel better for it. You'll turn into the lamb. Okay? But yeah, I keep getting pulled back to that, like the rough edges thing. Accepting that people have rough edges. And if you are, and if you can see, if you can like see, it comes with the territory that you're gonna know people lie, even if they don't realize they're lying, or you may be aware of things about people that they're not aware of. It gets a little rough, just saying, speaking from personal experience. All right, let's get into the tarot. Any messages or insights? Any messages or insights here? My water signs, it pertains to the spread. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Three of Wands in reverse, coming in on the dragon. All that gold, all that yellow, again, referencing gold and yellow. Really be focused on your solar plexus water signs or like doing what you can to like nurture your solar plexus. It'll really help you this week, especially if you're resonating with any of this. Gosh, Three of Wands in reverse. It's funny because Earth signs had a card come out that felt like avoidance. I forgot which one it was. Maybe it was the Four of Cups. And I'm kind of feeling like this too. Like this is not looking forward. Literally, this is like, I am not going to look forward. It's pessimism. Ooh. Okay. Like, I'm not going to look at that. I'm not going to acknowledge that. I'm not going to have hope for that. And it feels like for one specific thing being honest, a specific thing that I think you actually deep down hope for, 
than maybe telling yourself otherwise. It could be a battle between your soul and your and your ego there. Um, where your soul is like, yes, believe in it. And your ego is like, stop believing in that. Ooh, that feels a little harsh. <clears throat> Any other messages or insights from my water signs? Let's see. Interesting. And you just got the four of cups. And it landed over by the fox. So yeah, you, you are avoiding water signs. You are avoiding. You're avoiding. You're you're looking. You refuse to look at the thing that even spirit wants you to look at. I mean, my God, look at these cards. Look at that. The eye, nope. The fox, nope. Like, literally not looking at it. Trying not to believe in it. But your soul's like, believe in it. Spirit's like, believe in it. And you're like, no. No. Whatever this hesitation is, it's it's time to cleanse it. Cleanse it. Cleanse it, cleanse it, cleanse it. Ten of swords is still on the bottom. Any other messages or insights? For my water signs pertaining to this spread. Wow, another four. Four pentacles in reverse, and this also landed on the fox. It actually landed between the fox and the dragon, the way that it was coming out. Um, why is the four pentacles coming out here? Four pentacles in reverse, to me, indicates the beginning of a heart chakra opening or potential of like cleaning out the heart, cleansing out the heart, opening the heart. Four pentacles in reverse can also speak of feeling powerless, feeling not in control. Does it sound familiar from the shadow of the horse that we were talking about? Right, right. It, it, it all coincides. What's been sitting in your heart, water signs, and also connecting to your solar. I keep getting drawn back to the solar, which to me is like confidence, self-worth, that sort of stuff, right? What's been sitting in your heart is fear of being controlled, fear of being a victim. Ooh, there it is. Fear of being a patsy, fear of being a victim. And so spirit's trying to get you to look at that or to potentially look at what it is deep down that you actually have hope for. And you probably have, and your soul is, I think, is wanting and maybe hoping for something that you've lost in the past or something that hasn't gone right and like has created this fear of being a victim or fear of being controlled. And you're just like, no, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. That makes me feel uncomfortable. That makes me feel like I'm being put in a position to be played. That makes me feel like I'm being put in a position to lose my power or to be helpless or to be a victim or whatever. And you're just like, no, mm -mm. Mm -mm. not doing it, not doing it. And then we have the eight of swords in reverse landing on the swan and the horse, which is releasing from that illusion, releasing from that self imprisonment. Ten of swords still on the bottom. Any other messages or insights from my water signs pertaining to this spread? And definitely sit in meditation. I think sitting in meditation could be helpful here, especially if you are like working on your alignment, working on your energy, keeping your energy field strong. And if you're consistently clearing, I think this process will be very natural for you. Any other messages or insights here? <sighs> Herophant. I wanted to come in on the Eight of Swords in reverse. Hierophant is faith, faith, belief systems, um, high priest energy, um, also speaks of like commitments and obligations and, and things of that nature. But I feel like this is about like living by your code, living by your values, living by your ethics, living by your spirituality, living by your faith. I feel like all this energy that we've been talking about over here, like all of that energy is doubt. There's doubt there. You don't trust that where your soul wants to go, what your soul wants is safe for you. You don't trust that it is, which also means, again, just calling a spade a spade, that you don't trust spirit either. Because if you don't trust that your soul is wanting that for a reason, it also means you're not trusting that spirit's trying to lead you there either. It's also a trust issue. It's also a faith issue. Let's keep going. 
I just saw a glimpse of justice. We'll see if she comes out. Any other messages or insights? High Priestess in reverse with the Four of Cups. Again, ignoring. Avoidance, avoidance. What did I just, we were just talking about spirit intuition and your soul. You're not trusting your soul. You're not trusting your intuition. You're not trusting spirit with where you're being guided to go. Because you're afraid of being a victim. You're afraid of being taken advantage of. You're afraid of feeling helpless. You're afraid of feeling not in control. You're afraid of not being strong. Or even just betrayal. Not safe. Not safe. So water signs, it seems like emotional stability is more key here than the physical stability for you for this week of harmonizing the two. So this is getting to the root of why you do not feel emotionally safe or stable to go in this particular direction that spirit wants you to move into, that your soul wants to move into. Any other messages or insights? Oh my. They just landed on the hair font. Ace of Cups, some of you guys are afraid of commitment. But Ace of Cups is not just about romantic energy. It's also about the spirit. It's also about the soul, especially with Hierophant. That, I feel like that is a divinely guided path. Some of you, it's literally your blueprint and your purpose. And the Eight of Swords in a verse, like I said, you're breaking out of the illusion that you've had about it, which is relating to all this doubt and you know fear of that Four of Pentacles energy. So whether this is translating to fear of commitment or it's translating to lacking trust and faith in spirit, lacking trust and faith that you're going to be emotionally safe or stable that's what it is you're getting to the root of overall we have strength in reverse let it go with the world card wow and then we have queen of swords beautiful with the five of pentacles in reverse again this like soul retrieval energy <sighs> let it go let it go let it go let it go water signs you do not need to be in control here with the straight card in reverse, you do not like let, let it go. Let it go and surrender to where you're guided to go, okay? Because it's going to open a door. It's going to open a portal. It's going to open the world card for you, and you're going to see it. You're going to get it. With the Queen of Swords and the Five of Pentacles, again, I feel soul retreat. With the Five of Pentacles in reverse, I keep feeling soul retrieval energy. That might become my new soul retrieval card, with coupled with, with specific cards. I think in the Earth sign reading, it was coupled with the High Priestess, and I really felt it. But I'm also feeling with the Queen of Swords, because Queen of Swords, in a way, is kind of like minor to the major high priestess minor yeah minor the major high priestess a little bit she's the epitome of truth she's air and water in the form of of the definition or context of truth and information and understanding that is the high priestess so anyway you're gonna see it you're gonna see it you're gonna get it you're gonna know okay wow i want to look more into like i don't have any more cards to use because i like wrapped three decks but the direction you're afraid to move into, I'm curious as to like the details of it, but it's gonna be different for everybody, okay? And I think the other thing is water signs, whatever position it's gonna put you in, if you do accept it, if you do move in that path, it's gonna put you in the earthworm lamb swan energy. It is gonna be new, it is gonna be uncomfortable, it is gonna make you feel vulnerable, but I feel like in a way that's like sweet and needed and transformative and like, where you're you're really stable and taken care of even if it's just by spirit you know that you're afraid to move into that land energy some of you guys it could feel like a big sacrifice but it's beautiful and i think other people are going to see that it's beautiful okay i keep getting someone wants to help you um take that as it resonates as it comes up all right moving on all right, another intermission. I'm gonna take a little longer because I have to go to the bathroom. Um, where are we? 143? All right, so we shall be back at, we'll do 148. We resume at 148, go get your drinks, go take your potty breaks, we'll be back.
Hmm. Oh, I didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would. Um, well, I just checked my phone. I said 148, right? Yeah, I said 148. Um, let me see here. Why is that on? Why are you on? Exit. Um, I put this on do not disturb. Okay. I don't know if I can wait to 148. Feels like a long time. <laughs> It's only two minutes, but you know. Oh, it's an interesting effect with the light. But that's cool. Mm. Oh, wow. Air and fire next, huh? I think it's gonna be air. Yeah, it's gonna be air signs. So fire is gonna go last. Yeah, I can't wait to 148. It's gonna be time stamped anyway. <laughs> it's like I don't want to fill the space for like a whole other like minute and a half. All right, we'll do 45 for air. <clears throat> Okie dokie, air signs. Hello, air signs. Let's go ahead and oh, never mind. I forgot. Forgot to get this deck ready. Maybe it is gonna be 148. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie daisy. Yeah, it's gonna be 148 actually if I could do it fast. Let's see. How quickly I photo got. Oh yeah, 148 will be perfect now. No wonder I thought it was gonna be fine before. I forgot I had to do this. Okay. So intermission is over, so let's go ahead and get into your reading. You guys were definitely calling me over fire, so let's just dive in. Any messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. It's interesting, you guys feel kind of watery. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, like Queen of Cups energy almost. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. They're showing me a flowing river. Are you learning to go with the flow? Are you learning to not fight the current? Are you learning to be taken to the next stop? Something's flowing. Something's moving. Something's flowing. And it's either energy or emotion. I mean, energy's always moving anyway. But, like, it just feels emotional. It feels emotional, air signs. Almost, at, kind of, honestly, it feels like you're following your heart. I'm kind of getting Colors of the Wind vibe. Actually, they're like, now they're like showing me clips from Colors of the Wind. Oh God, how does the lyrics go? Can you follow, yeah, can you follow the, the Colors of the Wind, right? Can you follow where the wind takes you? It's interesting because you're air, but I was getting water before. Can you follow where the river goes? Can you follow, actually, isn't there a song about the river too? In that movie? Okay. Pocahontas might be a big synchronicity for you air signs for this week. I would recommend watching it if you resonate with that or you've been feeling called to it. If your inner child's like, don't you remember Pocahontas? Um, yeah, because literally there's a song about like the river and how to follow the river, right? And then there's one like literally colors of the wind. Um, oh God, I like now I want to look at the lyrics. Hold on, sorry, it's bothering me. Now I have to. 
because the ending the ending of that song was coming to me um when she like puts the dirt in his hands and he like lets it go and like she pulls him up what does she say you can only is it oh god okay i'm just gonna look it up i'm just gonna look it up i'm not gonna try i'm just gonna look it up colors of the wind lyrics you can own the earth and still all you own is earth until you can paint with all the colors of the wind feels very magician like to me it also feels like being in tune with gaia being in tune with energy being in yeah being in tune with the flow being in tune with the flow being in tune with how things really move naturally and just adapting to that and not forcing to let it to not forcing anything to be other than what it is so i'm gonna read those last three lines again because that's the one they were really highlighting to me you can own the earth and still all you own is earth until you can paint with all of the colors of the wind oh this is oh i'm getting into that co-creative like there's a co-creation thing coming up with that too um everything you have everything you possess they're just materials that's all it is and so you actually put your own energy into it so you put your own soul into it so you put your own magic into it okay so for example so as i'm moving i'm just like selling all my furniture just because the nature of the move it's like i can't take anything with me right um but there's a piece of furniture that i refurbished and it's like it's a hutch and I kind of made it into like my own little apothecary and I just, I, I'm in love with it, but that's what I did. I took time with it. Like I took time to take it apart, paint it, stain it, right? And then I put it all back together and it's like, and I adorned it with like my herbs and like, you know, I used to make candles and things like that and like teas and my tinctures and things like that nature, things of that nature. And it was just, oh, that's mine. And it's like, it was, and it had my magic infused in it to it because I put it into it and I made it something that was not just useful, but something that also was just kind of special, magical, and like had its own little purpose that wasn't just a piece of furniture, right? So it's like kind of hitting on that too. Um, some of you guys are realizing, I don't want to say this. How do, it's like, I don't want to say this. Um, I'm getting like possessions with that. Like, what's the difference between things, having things, and having purposeful tools that you've cultivated or that are important to you for your magic, right? Um, purposeful, purposeful. But I also, oh, I just reconnected. But I'm also getting this like following your heart sort of feel too. Any messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. But in, like really at the end of the day, we don't own anything. Like really, technically speaking, we don't really own anything. Nothing really belongs to us. Um, but if you infuse something with your magic, your energy, your intention, your heart, your soul, it comes alive. It comes alive in a way and it does become part of you, right? Ooh, ooh, shark, Ugh. Coming out with cracked open for you guys. Shark is the perception of a threat. The perception that the walls are, are closing in or they're coming for you. It can be real or it can just be an illusion. It's a perception. All right, so we got some shadow. This feeling of danger is lurking or something is around the, that's what it was called. Coming around the corner or like around the river bend. That's what it was called. That's what the song was called, around the river bend. Something around the river bend, air signs. <laughs> I don't wanna watch that movie with you guys. I was gonna do a watch party on Patreon and I ran out of time because I had to fly out here and I just I just wasn't enough time. But I really want to do that because it just feels fun. My inner child gets excited by that. Any other messages or insights <clears throat> from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. The heart, golden egg, heart chakra. That came out for earth signs, I believe. Um, so now we have the heart space that's being highlighted around the stag energy. 
showing your heart, showing your heart, letting your heart be active, almost like letting it shine brighter, letting it be in the driver's seat. Yeah, that's exactly what I was getting before, like letting your heart lead you, letting your heart lead you. I think you don't feel safe to do that normally. I think you don't feel safe to do that. Like it's dangerous to do that. It's dangerous to follow your heart versus your mind potentially. Um, or even letting your inner child lead you. Some of you guys, it's about your inner child more than your heart. I mean, inner child's an extension of you, right? But yeah, learning to let your heart lead you and moving away from distortion and maybe ways that you would make choices or maybe ways that you move about in the world that really are not aligned to you, not aligned to your heart, not aligned to your soul. But I keep getting at that with the shark. It's like, it's dangerous, it's dangerous, it's dangerous to do that. But is it? Ooh. Wow. Golden egg and the phoenix, a heart and the root chakra. Phoenix can speak of like literally Kundalini rising, Kundalini risings, Kundalini risings, excuse me, Kundalini awakenings. Um, uh, but it also speaks of rebirth energy. Again, this whole coming up and out thing, coming up, come up and out, come up and out. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let your heart lead you, let it guide you and let people see it. Let people see it. Let people see it. Any other messages or insights for my air signs? Thank you. This whole like the other like download I was getting about like how to like really put your magic into something and have it be an extension of you, a part of you. There's also something else that I was coming up with that was coming up here too. Um, letting your heart lead you, getting more connected to your heart, letting your heart really truly be um, in the driver's seat connects you to your own soul in a deeper way, connects you to like your own life force, your own mana, your own chi. And then that way you can also get more connected to the life that is in everything around you. Okay. And yeah, and in turn, you're getting more in tune in general, like in general about like energy and how all, all things are interconnected, right? But becoming more alive within and letting yourself be more alive and letting that lead you, you get to be more connected to the life that's all around you. Okay. There's a real, there's a real fear with this. You can feel it. There's an anxiety with it. Any other messages or insights for my air signs? Gemini, Libra. Oh, I'm feeling a pain in my lower back. Oh, on the right side. Oh, oh, no likey. Oh, shit. Knee. Oh. Wow. That's like maybe kidney area, like kidney, hip area. That is not mine. <laughs> that is not mine. Ouch. Whoo. Is someone feeling defensive? Is someone feeling like they need to protect themselves? Wow. Oh, that made me dizzy. Any other messages or insights for my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Anxiety. There is, there's a real anxiety and fear here to be seen like this. Some of you also um, may have not had a whole lot of play or maybe like you don't let yourself fully play in the way that you uh, want, in the way your soul wants to. It keeps going back to the heart and the soul, the heart and the soul, the heart and the soul, the heart and the soul. But yeah, with mouse coming out, mouse is an anxious energy. It's getting worried about details and it's coming in with the elder card, which um, this could be something that's been passed down. You could have like come from a family where they're really neurotic, not a judgment, it just is what it is, or you know, an anxiety filled situation. Um, could even just be trauma but yeah i mean mouse it just feels habitual it feels like a long-term standing anxiety around being seen in this way for some of you there's a catalytic event that feels very threatening and very uncomfortable but it is literally to like crack you open 
<laughs> it's to crack you open and get your heart in the driver's seat. And it just fills you with anxiety. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. It's to, it's to get you to go with the flow. It's to get you in your body. Firefly. It's funny too the way the cards are coming out here because this landed on Phoenix. This is a spark. This is like, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, usually Firefly speaks of like spark of inspiration. So like an incoming energy of just like being flooded, like being like mused, like to like write or to do or whatever, or a lot of ideas. And then it's like a fleeting or it's like a catalytic spark or a spark of attraction. This to me feels like a big just opening with your heart and your root, but it feels like you're coming up and out. You are like getting activated to come up and out and to have your heart be in the driver's seat. And there's so much color going on in these cards. There's so much color going on in these cards and the other two, like black and white. Colors of the wind, and just kill again, colors of the wind. This is letting your heart lead you so you can have more color in your life, more life and vitality in your life, bring you back to life and to get you out of this place of fear, not safe, anxious, anxiety. Some of you guys might isolate a lot. Shark and mouse can be very isolating. Any other messages or insights my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. The black and white with the color of the background with tiger. Tiger is actually about spiritual awakening. Tiger is also about coming into power, specifically divine feminine wisdom. So this is like a like, Queen of Wands card. Um, ooh, with the wolf. With the wolf. Um, wolf is like a pack energy. It, like I've been seeing this more as like leader alpha, like someone who looks out for the pack or does work on behalf of the pack. But it is also an energy of wisdom. Like this is somebody who. Um, is learning divine wisdom or learning advanced wisdom that will can eventually become like elder. It's kind of like elder energy. And then with the tiger, that's like some serious, powerful energy here. Um, you're being pushed to go, go into your power. You're being pushed to unleash your power. And it's from your lower chakras, like root, sacral, um, solar. And again, the golden heart is like the heart of the golden heart. The golden age is the heart. Um, but I'm getting so much more like the lower chakra energies with you and especially with the root coming in here with this anxiety you could need some root work if you have any scorpion in your chart i definitely recommend watching the scorpio reading there was a lot of that kind of messaging that was coming up for scorpios um but with tiger and wolf this is coming into a level of empowerment a level of confidence that you've been afraid of that you've been avoiding because like the level of confidence that i'm feeling with you a level of empowerment i'm feeling with you um, requires certain things that you've been afraid of. And I, I, I'm truly getting like a like agoraphobic energy, like social anxiety, afraid to be seen, afraid to be out, like wanting to be in your cave, wanting to be in your home, wanting to be a hermit, which is weird for my air signs, but that's honestly what I'm feeling. And also this hesitation to let your heart lead you, like almost like there's this feeling of that's foolish or that's not safe. But look at, look, look, look at that. And underneath that, we got the lamb. Pure, baby, new, gentle energy, innocent energy. I feel like a lot of this is gonna come down to your inner child. What your inner child has been wanting, ooh, and maybe like has been blocked from with the elephant. The block is getting removed. But it's whatever this catalytic event is that's triggering this. And whatever the catalytic event is, makes you anxious makes you anxious. Let's go ahead and pull some cards. Ooh, Empress on the bottom. Any messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Are you afraid of others' reactions? Some of you guys might be afraid of other people's reactions here. It's just what I'm getting. Any messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Nine of Pentacles. That actually wanted to come on the mouse. 
Nine of Pentacles is independence, it's confidence, um, financial independence, stability, attractiveness as well. It also speaks to attractiveness. It's kind of like the pre-Empress energy before she goes into that status of Empress. You are a Nine of Pentacles. This is what needs to be seen. You are a Nine of Pentacles, but people don't see that. People don't see that, and you may not even totally believe that either, with Mouse being here, because there's an anxiety that I feel like is overshadowing the Nine of Pentacles. You are, I keep getting that, you are a Nine of Pentacles, but you can't fully like embody and exude it because of this Mouse energy, because of this Shark energy, because of this overlying anxiety of being seen. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Oh, geez. Cherry Universe just landed over there, too. Cherry Universe is, like, not moving forward. It's being stuck. Not moving forward, not progressing. Um, could even be avoiding commitment. I actually feel like an imbalance is happening, actually. That's what... It almost feels like the chariot's broken. <laughs> Like the vehicle, the car is like breaking down is kind of what it feels like. Because like one wheel is the Nine of Pentacles, which is you, and the other wheel is anxiety. And they like, they can't work together. So what happens, like this wheel's going that way, that wheel's going that way, right? Like that Sphinx is going that way, that Sphinx is going this way. So it just like bleh, breaks. You need to somehow get a hold of both of these Sphinxes to turn in the direction that you want to move into. This... This is you, this is your heart. And it's trying to go the right direction. And this, this is illusion. This is fear. This is like that, that deep, like, um, um, how do I wanna say, uh, like deep, like chains, you know, like the root work that like I've been alluding to, right? That's like veering you off course. And so it's like your chariot, it's just like, well, it's just like falls off to the side. Some of you have been having problems, not problems, I'm gonna say having delays, delays or stagnancy in your ascension process. You know who you are, you know who you are. You've been feeling that, you've been wondering about it, you've been confused by it, and it's because of this mouse. Are you afraid to be independent? I don't think you're afraid to be independent. Maybe some of you are. I, the mouse just feels like an illusion to me. It doesn't feel real. It feels like it's a narrative or a belief or it's literally like some ancestral curse of anxiety um, or social anxiety or fear of people or what have you because I feel like you're, you isolate a lot. Yeah, and the chariot universe also has the page of wands universe, which is like bad news or an unhappy inner child, basically. Um, could even be someone who's like sassy and obnoxious, but yeah, it's like whatever your your symbolic vehicle of progression is right now, whether that's your work and you're trying to get a promotion or your literal car or you're in like an ascension process and you feel like you're not getting to the point where you want to be in your ascension process this is the awareness and understanding that your vehicle's been broken because you got two sphinxes two wheels going in the opposite direction and it's time to like bring them back in together bring them into alignment any other messages or insights Ooh, on the firefly we got the sun which is new beginning and happiness and joy again if you like if you let the nine of pentacles lead it's almost like just take the mouse out of the equation, shed the mouse, get rid of the mouse, rely on the Nine of Pentacles and get your chariot in order. Get your vehicle of ascension in order so you can you can really truly be leading from your heart and your soul and really truly going towards happiness and joy and what it is that you want. The mouse is an illusion. For some of you guys, the mouse could be manifesting as an external person, like a friend or a family member or romantic interest, where they could be very anxious about you being so independent or like being on the brink of this like 
ex moment of expansion, of explosion, whatever, um, empowerment, if you will. Um, and their presence, their anxiety could actually be like throwing you out of alignment a little bit as far as like getting to this reality. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. That's a lot right there, isn't it? The sun and the death card, all landing on the firefly, gold, golden egg, and phoenix combo. I mean, phoenix is the flip side of death, right? It's literally like the ending to the beginning, the death to the rebirth sort of energy. Um, this just feels like an explosive catalytic moment of like you've arrived is what it feels like to me. But the death card I think is really just indicating that change. I feel like a lot of you, this is like a straight up about ascension. Any other messages or insights? You gotta let go of the mouse. That's also part of this too. Like sun highlighting the death card. What really needs to be released here? And it's the mouse. Anxiety, fear, or someone who sits in that frequency. You could also like literally be telling somebody, giving someone the bad news, like, look, I can't continue with you on my path. You probably wouldn't say it like that. But, you know, Page of Pentacles coming in with the shark. Page of Pentacles can actually indicate friendship. It can also indicate um, plans, um, questions of trust, someone, for, like an opportunity presenting itself and you're like examining it. Trustworthy, not trustworthy. Practical, not practical. It's like, that's kind of the vibe of the Page of Pentacles. Interesting, it came over with the shark. Oh, wow. Yep. And there it is. Six of Cups, my patterns card. When the Six of Cups comes out, it can speak of the past. It can speak of nostalgia, inner child. Like I said, some inner child stuff has been coming up for you a lot here. Whatever this catalytic event is, it will show you the shark. It's going to show you your past. It's going to show your inner child. And it's going to get you to realize how much the mouse has been affecting you and your ability to move forward or to reach success or to like fall, like continue through an ascension process. It's all coming down to the mouse, which again is anxiety, fear, neuroticism. I'm getting isolation. I'm getting social anxiety, um, gorephobia. Like that's like the end of the stuff that I'm getting, whether it's you or it's somebody in your environment that's holding you back, but it's time to recognize it. It's time to recognize where this mouse energy comes from, where this fear comes from. Let's see what else wants to come out. Hmm. Any other messages or insights from my air signs? Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Beautiful. Oh, I love that. I love that. Nine of Wands and a verse just came out. Yeah, for those of you guys where the mouse is an external energy, they're really afraid of you letting them go. But it kind of seems like there's no choice. So now on the shark, we have the six of pentacles, the, no, excuse me, the page of pentacles, the six of cups, and the nine of wands in reverse. There's a real recognition here that that feeling of threat, that mouse energy needs to be released and let go. Nine of wands in reverse is letting go of wounds for me. It's letting go of wounds. Um, getting out of survival mode, surrendering. Overall, we have the Three of Swords. Oh, wow. We got Two of Cups in reverse. Two of Swords. Eee. Five of Swords. Yikes. And Nine of Cups in reverse. And then with the Devil being released. Most of you, I think, have an external person here that needs to be let go of. And I know it hurts. I know it sucks. It's not fun. But look at that. I mean, straight up, this is being hurt by an individual and feeling really disappointed about it and getting really triggered about it. That's what this is. It's getting hurt via relationships and feeling really disappointed and the ego feeling really let down. And that is what the mouse energy is. So this kind of events have fueled that mouse energy within yourself, not being able to trust people, not wanting people to see you because it's just gonna lead to the three of swords and nine of cups in reverse. It's just gonna lead to disappointment and heartache and people are a threat. And for those of you where this is an external person, this is what they're afraid of experiencing. And unfortunately, they might experience it because you do have to release it. You have to release the mouse energy. And if it's them, you got to release them. 
Devil in reverse. Healing. Five of Cups in reverse. Letting go of grief. Letting go of loss. So air signs. If this is your energy, this is your pain that's fueling this anxiety of others, um, this anxiety of being seen, right? And maybe even isolating as a result of that. You've got to go to the Six of Cups to understand it and got to go to the Six of Cups to release it. Okay. All right, moving on. Last but not least, we got fire signs. We are going to go into intermission again. Um, oh, got my throat. Let's see. We're going to do 218. We'll do 218. Totally getting a humidifier for my place. Oh. All right, let's get all these sorted. Let me fix this animal deck. I don't know why I shuffled it like that initially. Not initially, but however long ago that was. Oh, my throat. Uh, uh. It's just taken 24 hours to be a complete dry husk. <laughs> Going from humidity to the desert, the dry, dry desert. seconds. All right, checking my phone real quick. Let's see. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, one well, more sip of water. <laughs> Okay, welcome back from intermission. Fire signs, you guys are up next. <clears throat> okay. All righty, let's get into it. Aries, Leo, Sag. Oh. Whew. All right. Aries, Leo, Sag. Oh God, sorry, I need more water. <laughs> Aries Leo Sag for the week. Mm. Mm. Getting pulled to Virgo. You could be dealing with Virgo, can have Virgo in your chart. Right now, Ceres and Orcus are in Virgo. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Ceres actually does have some activity this week. Hold on a second. Let me check on that for you. Series, ooh, working with Neptune. Working with Neptune and Pluto. Oh, okay. More closely with Neptune though, that screams illusion to me. Um, yeah, why are they pulling me to Virgo for you? I mean, that's just what they're doing. Um, it's still working, Orcus is still working with Uranus, but not as closely. So I would probably look more at Series. I would see where Series is transiting your natal charts. Um, series is at Virgo, 27, 26 degrees. It's retrograding right now and is trying Pluto and Aquarius and is opposing Neptune and, Plu and excuse me, Neptune and Pisces at 25 degrees. 
that op opposition between Ceres and Neptune, because Ceres in and of itself is very nurturing. Ceres is all about self-care. Opposition to Neptune, it feels like self-care can go off the rails a little bit, but neither of those are in fire signs, but it was just, they were just bringing a Virgo. Um, interesting. Any messages or insights for fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag, oh, you guys are getting new perspective on people. Hold on a second, let me roll my sleeves up for this one. You're getting a new perspective on people, fire signs. Um, who really cares for you, who doesn't? Have you misjudged someone or people? I go vice versa, but that's kind of what I'm getting for you initially. When people really show up, what really matters? Some of you guys might also be understanding to uh, your own love language. Some of you guys might not have Mm -hmm. Some of you guys may not have had a clear understanding on your own personal love language, or maybe it's actually changed because it can change, right? Um, yeah, it's like, that's what I just keep getting. It's like really recognizing what actually matters about how people show up. Like it's telling how people show up and what people expect from you as well. I feel like the deck did not like that. Any other messages or insights from fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. I keep getting Virgo. Aries, Leo, Sag. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. <laughs> this is the card of the week, apparently. I think every single sign got there, every single element got this. Golden egg. Ooh, ooh, you're seeing your heart fire signs this is what I'm saying it's like you're actually understanding on a deeper level what you actually need and what people actually show up and support you in those particular ways and I think you're kind of surprised as to who does and who doesn't who you've also let in and who you've also shunned who actually does provide you what you need and who doesn't so you understand what I'm saying like maybe realizing that you've allowed people to get close who really don't show up for you in the ways that you need and that you've shunned or pushed people away who actually do. I'm also getting a little bit of what I got in the air sign reading where um, people who really see you, who really see your heart, make you feel a little too vulnerable, a little too close for comfort. Oh, I gotta adjust the seat. Okay. Whew. All right. Well, there it is, fire signs. The swan, God seeing God. <laughs> uh, swan speaks of mirroring. Swan speaks of relationships, partnerships. Swan also speaks of being, um, uh, how do I want to say, uh, feeling at home and complete within yourself, feeling whole, the feeling of whole. We're always whole. We just have to remember that we're whole, right? But especially with the golden egg. Wow. 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 <laughs> it's It does have that feeling of like, kindred souls friendships and family and romance and business and otherwise not just romantic but like my heart to your heart your heart's the same as mine right it has that feeling to it and anybody who has shown you their heart and it's like been a match and they've seen your heart it's been a little too close for comfort is what i'm getting like honestly fire signs i'm really like it's kind of sad but that's just what i'm picking up on like anyone who's fit this it's triggered something in you that was uncomfortable or potentially threatening and then you've like pushed it away and then people who didn't like you you've let that you let those kind of people get close because i mean this is vulnerable this is really vulnerable that's really vulnerable if any of you um are perceiving like divine counterparts twin flames again perceiving perception whether it's real or not it's your own reality um, that this is also highlighted by that too. Any other messages or insights? Ooh, hoo, hoo, that feels like a fight. Wow. So this landed on Elder, which Elder uh, as a card, like in this reading in particular, this is part of the collective reading, and I basically blend them with the elements. Um, the Elder card was coming up as like kind of like an octopus energy, like. <coughs> <laughs> so dry like the roots or ancestral patterns or even just our past or habits mm, that get in the way of us doing this full-on soul retrieval soul retrieval is also indicated by this as well 
I'm sorry, I keep getting drawn back to this. This feels like a trigger. This feels like your catalyst fire signs. People who like are a true match to you are your personal trigger. It's like looking in a mirror, which is always gonna be triggering. But people who can fully understand you because they are just like you, uh, way too vulnerable way too close for comfort but around the elder card of what like needs to be released <laughs> it's a lot fox has come out a bit too in the readings today fox and panther i gotta be honest this feels like a fight this feels like an argument this feels like coming to chew someone's head off like that's what this feels like to me it feels authoritative too it feels like someone coming in and throwing their weight around is what it feels like maybe you had an experience in your past or your or present or throughout your family of this kind of an archetype like someone who just thinks they know better like this feels like somebody who is who has a little bit of a superiority complex like i'm the smartest one in the room or i know everything you know it's like that's how it feels it doesn't feel good it does not feel good this could be part of your own shadow and like for most of you i feel like it's just been a presence in your life or throughout your family that is like holding you back <clears throat> any other messages or insights uh for fire signs aries leo sag i'm hearing gemini virgos and gemini's i mean that's like mercurial energy fox is kind of mercurial hmm peculiar camel and dragon coming in here and wanting to come here with stag and lifting the veil this is about trusting what you're seeing about what needs to be released and dragon is about seeing it's solar plexus energy you have the heart and the solar plexus right here dragon came out a couple times too uh throughout the readings and camel's like the survival energy camel's like slow and steady uh, and you'll survive and you'll get there it's kind of like my 40 days 40 nights in the desert with no water card um i feel like it's coming through a shadow for you though see like you're seeing here that camel is not the way to be playing it safe and surviving is not thriving mm. yeah Allo allowing people to come into your reality or get it close to you that feel like safe bets that feel like i hate to say it but yeah like just getting by it's not thriving uh like these could be relationships of convenience right a finance or easy gratification it can even be like that but it's surviving it's not thriving and for some reason like picking these kind of relationships or these circumstances that are like around that it could even be like um like doing the nine to five job to get a steady paycheck because it's surviving but you're not thriving right so equate it to that. But I feel like this is circulating around relationships and the environments you surround yourself. Oh, environments. This feels, this does feel like, okay, the Virgo sign reading had something similar. So I would watch Virgos for my fire signs. But anyway, coming back. Um, but I feel like this is more about relationships and environments for you fire signs, where you've been playing it safe or just like playing out of your patterns. You've been acting, not playing, excuse me, acting out of your, acting out your patterns or family patterns relationships of convenience doing what you need to do doing like the expected thing um because you're surviving the spirit wants you to thrive the spirit wants you to thrive i just i just noticed this too like i know it's a mirror image but i just noticed like the chest to the chest heart to heart right i see you you see me i know you you know me that's what spirit wants for you and honestly fire signs i feel like spirit brought this in or is bringing this in so you can really see how the camel energy does not work for you it does not work for you and it's also going to bring up this this energy from your past or your family history or present circumstance that's holding you back like this feels like a fighting attacking energy and it's like from a level of I know best or I know everything or like being very authoritative or trying to have control because the fox is in a shadow they can do that too or be manipulative with their words like that can also be that kind of energy mm. you know usually the element that goes last is usually the most intense reading 
owl. Oh, beautiful. That he landed on swan. Really soft energy here too. Owl is a psychic energy. It's kind of like a high priestess energy. It also in this deck particularly um, speaks of um, rewards, rewards that are coming. This trigger is a gift and it feels like it's a person. Whether it's a friend, a romantic interest, a long lost relative or a business relationship, like this is an individual you have a very spiritual, psychic connection with. And for some, it could be multiple people, like a, like a new tribe, right? But that's what I'm getting. Psychic, spiritual, a true heart to heart, matching hearts, matching people, like matching tribe, reciprocal. Like you understand what I'm saying here? It's like comes in and you go, whoa whoa <laughs> whoa 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 and you can't stop seeing the camel you can't stop seeing how you've just been in survival mode or you've been having these relationships or environments that are about convenience it's not a it's not a spiritual thing it's not a matter of the heart it's not a matter of what your soul wants it's purely convenience or expectation or i did the thing i'm supposed to do and then it highlights this Ugh. There's so many ways this energy is coming out too. It's like, I'm getting that authoritative thing. I'm getting the know-it-all thing. I'm getting the manipulative thing, manipulative with words. But I'm also getting like a shoving down of like values, like beating values into you that are like distorted. Maybe you were actually beat as a child um, to be programmed to believe a certain thing. But anyway, let's keep going. These, sorry, I gotta stop. These individuals or individual is showing you what thriving really looks like and how to stop surviving and start thriving. Any other messages or insights from my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. I'm taking that, yeah. Oh, unicorn. Third eye energy. Where do you wanna go? Yeah, I, I thought you wanted to go there. You got three chakra cards. I wanted to go on the dragon with Campbell. Third eye energy, it's third eye energy. It's also psychic energy, but it's also believing in the impossible, that the impossible is truly possible. Again, that's the shift, right, of survival to thrive, right? Because it's not doing the expected. It's not running off of the programs anymore. It's like, it's not just relationships and circumstances out of convenience it's seeing it for what it is especially paired with the dragon because dragon while it's solar dragon specifically speaks of seeing through the ego seeing through the veils um seeing it for what it is and you can't unsee it you can't unsee it on the bottom rabbit fear Ooh, nightingale, so I got throat chakra. It's like your whole chakra system is getting activated here, fire signs. Nightingale, throat chakra. Ooh, peacock, and then be I knew I could feel that. I could feel the pull with hawk. Hawk is being guided in a certain direction. Fire signs, this combative energy that's been beaten into you or is in your present environment or it's been part of your upbringing, it's something that has fueled this just be in survival, just be in survival, just be in survival, just do the expected, just do what's convenient. Like don't make life harder than it needs to be by taking risks. God forbid you listen to your heart, right? Spirit is trying to guide you to choosing this, to choosing that. That's why Hawk is here. And you see how it's going away from like Peacock and like Nightingale and, and the Rabbit. Nightingale is that communicative energy, but I can feel fight. Like I can feel conflict there. Like, yeah, you can stand there and like speak on unpleasantness when it comes to this sort of energy or the unpleasantness you've experienced. And I think it's important to have that moment of honesty with yourself, but Peacock, Peacock is superficial. It's relationships that are of convenience. It's not deep. It's not heart to heart. I know you, you know me. It's not that. And Spirit's saying, get the fuck out of there. <laughs> get the fuck away from that. Get away from that. Like, I feel like just looking at this, I feel like I'm looking at like superficial relationships that function off of fear, where communication fun functions off of fear and scarcity. Wow. And then underneath Hawk. Oh, 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 whoa! Oh, fire signs. Holy crap. 
Sorry, I felt a wave of energy when I pulled these cards out. So Hawk is guiding you to this. Spider with Vulture, Death Magic. Death Magic by way of co-creation and networking. Spirit's trying to guide you in the, in the direction of a transformation. They're trying to guide you to this, right? And look at what that transformation brings. I got chills. And if you've been watching for a while, you know, you know what this means. We have Stingray. Stingray has been coming up in the collective via Manta Ray about this primordial energy that's getting unlocked. This deeper level of spiritual and emotional strength. You see his chakra system is all light, light up, light, light up, lit, lit up. You already have so many cards here that are just pure chakra cards. You have the heart, you've got third eye, you've got solar, and now you have the crown coming in here. Nightingale represented the throat. And then you have elk. Elk is divine masculine principle. It's also this like what we've been learning with North Node and Taurus, integrity, accountability, right? Standing up for ourselves and doing what we need to do to, to really harmonize and stabilize and like live sustainable lives of joy for us and for others. That responsibility that comes with that and cosmic egg, awakenings, ascensions, next level awareness, right? Going to the next level. This is really maturing up spiritually emotionally um even with the physical realm like taking accountability for all of that wow oh fire signs okay let's pull some cards let's pull some tarot cards any messages or insights more fire signs Ooh, Leo, Sag. Pertaining to the spread, Aries, Leo, Sag. Woo. Oh, just felt energy go up on my spine. Jeez. Aries, Leo, Sag. I just, the camel must go. I just keep hearing that. The camel energy must go. The camel perspective must go. So on these, we have the Eight of Wands in reverse came out. Blockages. Blockages, challenges, um, delays, miscommunication. Again, I feel like people, a group of people or a person like came in or is coming in and it's just triggering. Cause you're just like, oh shit. <laughs> you, can't, you can't unsee how you've been surviving. You can't unsee how you've just been surviving, over thriving and it triggers you. It triggers you, it causes you to rethink some stuff. Um, it slows things down and potentially causes conflict. Oh, all right. Any other messages or insights for my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag, pertaining to the spread. Mm -hmm. What did I say? It gets you to start thinking about some stuff. Seven of Pentacles. Um, if you had any miscommunications with these people or this person, or if you do or will, um, you are going to be reflecting on it quite heavily. But that's what I'm getting with the Seven of Pentacles, like reevaluation. Reevaluation of the direction you've been going, especially being in the camel energy with relationships or environments of convenience of surviving some of you guys could have really been hitting some walls recently or some frustrations and this person and or people getting you to see that and see why that is again once you see it you can't unsee it On dragon, Ten of Wands in reverse, put down the burden of the camel. I, I mean, I can say it's all blue in the face. Stop surviving and start thriving. Uh, especially if these are relationships of convenience, you've actually been getting more drained and more tired by the convenience factor because it's conditional. They're conditional relationships, transactional relationships, even if it is business, like there's nothing wrong with business relationships being about business. 
you know, there's there's a good there's actually a good reason for them to stay just business. But even then, like you don't treat each other like you're not human, right? You don't treat each other like you don't got souls, right? But with this like relationships of convenience, transactional relationships, conditional love, which is not love, but conditional relationships, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what your needs are, are you fulfilling the agreement? Are you fulfilling the convenience? And the second you don't, you're, you're expendable. That's stressful to me, but whatever. Who, who am I to say one, one way or another? Any other messages or insights from my fire signs? Yep, unchain yourself. Devil in reverse with the Ten of Wands in reverse. Unchain yourself from these environments and relationships that are transactional and purely for convenience. Stop it. Stop it. Oh my God, the fire signs just keeps going on and on. The nine of swords just came out. Once you see it, you can't unsee how much you need to do this for yourself. And it causes you anxiety. You're like, oh shit, oh shit. And some of you, again, you might realize that you push people or a person away. Um, that was not like that, <laughs> right? um which is causing you to reevaluate some things but also the more you're seeing the truth you're just like having an oh shit moment of how much you do need to like rectify this right for your it's for yourself it's for yourself again it's to start to thrive and live a life that has more purpose more fulfillment more meaning any other messages or insights Nine of Cups, Nine of Cups, excuse me, Ace of Cups. Because you're seeing the truth about your soul, your emotions, the path, the true path and environment and relationships that are fulfilling to you. Ace of Cups I also see as the heart, which might as well be the golden egg. You see this about a person or a people or environment. You see it. You see that match. You see that connection and you're realizing how much you need to get out of present circumstances to go get it. And it's freaking you out a little bit. Any other messages or insights from my fire signs? Aries, Leo, Sag. Okay. All right, now we have, okay. So underneath this little group we got here, Six of Swords and the Seven of Cups. Starting to make moves here, starting to move on to the next phase of things. This is like coming to a piece about the chaos that's happening here. Also coming to, coming to terms with your feelings. I feel like it's almost like sorting out the cups, sorting out the pieces of you and your heart and your feelings that you kind of haven't been prioritizing because you've been prioritizing relationships of convenience. And then the second you realize how important that golden egg is, right? How important you are and the people that can fulfill that, that are fulfilling that, that want to fulfill that, that want to support that. But again, some of you seem like you pushed away. You're like, okay, time to sort shit out. Time to sort shit out. Short, short, sort, Jesus. Sort shit out, I'm getting tired. Now another card came out on Fox and Panther. And it's the five of swords in reverse this is forgiveness forgiveness and acceptance and letting go of people who are like this the experiences you've had of people like this the habit or um, ancestral pattern of this and however way it was manifesting in the way that i described before okay overall nine of pentacles in reverse three of swords Ooh, denial it feels like denial pages yeah with the four of cups with the four of cups judgment in reverse oh my oh fires yeah that's exactly what i was saying we're gonna get into it so nine of pentacles in reverse this is insecurity this is um feeling like you can't really stand on your own as much this is like kind of lacking independence confidence and we got the three of swords which is pain heartbreak and then Page of Swords in reverse with the Four of Cups and the Judgment card in reverse. This, these three feel like denial, okay? 
Page of Swords in reverse, I feel like is lying to the self. Four of Cups is, is a little bit of avoidance. It's also apathy. Um, it can also be boredom. Um, not wanting to admit that in these relationships or environments of convenience that you're bored, you actually don't feel very good. They don't make you feel good. They make you actually feel kind of less than because con like relationships of convenience, you're using people. You're using people or you're being used, right? And judgment in reverse, deep down, you know it's not right. Deep down, you know this is not part of your alignment <coughs> for your soul. You know that. Um, for those of you where you've really pushed this person or these people away um you're avoiding the regret that you feel about that because underneath judgment in reverse hmm. moon in reverse the truth of how you feel is coming up to the surface and you feel ace of pentacles in reverse and the lovers that you've missed out on an opportunity with people who are just like you with people who see you when you see them like you know them and they know you like really know Wow. Underneath the lovers, look at this. Two of Wands, Seven of Swords in reverse, and a King of Cups in reverse. Look at that. You got a choice to make here. You can keep missing out, or you can keep choosing what you've been choosing, which is this. Seven of Swords in reverse and King of Cups in reverse, denying your feelings. Um, this can also be like emotional detachment. This can be self-sabotage, emotional manipulation. It's again, like conditional love, conditional relationships. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it's time, fire signs, time to make a choice. You can't unsee this. Like if you take the time to evaluate your situation compared to these people, this individual, as they come in, because some of you guys have already come in, a lot of this has played out already. Some of you, they haven't come in yet. But once once they do, it's very catalyzing. Like there's no denying how like activating it is. And you can't unsee the truth and reality of your situation, of these kinds of relationships or environments and how much you've put this on the back burner. And for some of you, how much you actually care about this person or these people. Can't deny it can't deny it and then this this little angry character whether it's like presently people that ha you have these kind of conditional transactional relationships with or it's like a like like uh, an experience from your childhood or like family patterning or whatever i feel like it's an energy of like that you've tried to avoid or like appease and you're like yeah i, I gotta let this go gotta let this go some of you it could be your own shadow your own ego but yeah if i have a swords in reverse it's like just moving past that and just sitting in truth about your situation wow oh goodness all right fire signs and everyone else who's watching i hope you guys got a lot out of this reading this was a long reading it's almost three hours long um but i hope you guys got a lot out of it and don't forget to check out the website vimeo patreon all that stuff and i will see you guys later have an amazing week take care